Gracious God and Heavenly Father, what a beautiful day. It's just a glorious day to be out here and enjoy an opportunity to go racing and to watch the race today. As always, we remember the men and women, both here at home and abroad, that are protecting our freedom. We ask you to watch over them and keep them safe. Watch over their families as well. Heavenly Father, I ask you for a safe day of racing today for these competitors, for the officials. Bless the fans with a wonderful, wonderful good time. And above all, we just ask that your peace and your presence would surround us all. It's in your holy name that I pray. Amen. Here to perform our national anthem, please welcome Audra McLaughlin. Oh, see, can you see by the dawn's early light one so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight The debut of Dash for Cash is coming up. See if anyone can stop Kyle Busch. It's heat racing for the first time in Xfinity history next on FS1.
A small town in northeastern Tennessee welcomes a historic day in NASCAR racing. A new dash for cash is ready to begin. FS1 welcomes you this afternoon to Bristol Motor Speedway for Xfinity Series Racing. It's the Fitzgerald Glider Kits 300 on a picture perfect day. Two heats and then the main helping us call the action one special driver. Brad Kozlowski, our guest analyst, and he knows Bristol pretty well. Two wins in the Xfinity Series, two wins here in the Sprint Cup Series. And he also drives the two car. This is the second appearance on our show, and you see him in just a moment on a two box. Twos are wild here. BK didn't dash for cash, but he did dash up to the booth, getting ready <laughs> to help us call the action with Adam Alexander and Michael Walter. Boys, you look dashing today i must say Good well one. That, that, that's a nice line and you know <laughs> racing's tight here at bristol brad cut it close getting to the booth but but you made it and you know you grew up racing on short tracks how cool is it for you to see a short track format playing out on this stage well adam bristol is the ultimate short track growing up in michigan tracks in the midwest when you look at great short tracks we think of those high banking tracks where you're on edge the entire race like winchester anderson uh, and up in uh, uh the wisconsin areas all kinds of great racetrack short tracks and then you got bristol which is <laughs> the granddaddy of them all you want to talk about a tough short track this is as tough as it gets you're going to run on the bottom and you're going to be on the edge all the way around for about five to ten laps they're going to run all the way up against the wall michael slinging the tires up against the wall slinging the car side up against the wall just a really tough intimidating short track and these guys are in for a challenge you know what what i love is you were just on this racetrack you talked about how tough it was i saw you almost hit the wall sliding and slipping all over the place what challenges are presented here at Bristol what do you need to do well to run well the biggest challenge here Michael is most of the speed is right up against the wall and if you miss it by just this much if you miss the groove by this much you hit the marbles and you're probably gonna hit the wall so we got we got two heats and then we got a main. How do you manage the heat so you stay out of trouble for the 200 lap main? Well, you've got a couple of agendas. You got the the Xfinity regulars that are trying to dash for cash. That's a hundred grand, Adam. They've got to go for it, and that's what I love about this format. Does patience work here at Bristol? Right? Sometimes, <laughs> not really. All right, it's about time for heat one here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Let's go trackside now and get the command of fire engines. And now, for the most famous words of motorsports, please welcome your Grand Marshal, Robert Fitzgerald. Drivers, start your engines. It's a new format, but the same old Bristol. The engines have fired heat one when we continue on FS1.
It is the first official short track race of the year for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. We're live at Bristol Motor Speedway on FS1. Our weather brought to you by Golfsmith. Perfect. 64 degrees, not a cloud in the sky. Track temp at 96. It's going to rubber up, and that track temp is going to continue to climb. Now we go from the driver's seat with Darrell Wallace Jr. starting eighth in heat one. The only thing I'd rather be doing than golfing is racing, and we're going to do a little bit of that now. Short track style, we're going to check in with Darrell Wallace Jr. starting in the eighth position in this first heat. Darrell Wallace Jr., do you copy? It's Mike up in the FS1 booth. Hey, buddy, I got you. Man, you're looking good with that UT ball helmet on, ready to race. The heat is here. It's time to try to go dash for some cash. Are you ready, friend? Yeah, man, I'm ready. I got to be with this helmet on. Beam, beam killed it on this one, so go ball. That's right, a little home cooking there. What will be your challenges and your, and your agenda trying to race up there to get one of those dash for cash spots? Yeah, we got to be really smart about it. My guys have given me a really good Ford Mustang for this week. Uh, we made a lot of improvements over the last couple of weeks, so we just have to be smart about it, see if we can get us a good spot. Um, but we got to settle in if we can't, because we still got the main event uh, at the end of after this. So we'll just have some fun today and, and uh, give it a good shot and see if we can put ourselves in the spot for 100 grand. So can't thank everybody enough for this opportunity. Just got to make the most of it now. Great stuff. This is Brad Keselowski as well, Bubba. What I want to know is how are you going to find that balance between patience and aggression? You're starting eighth in this heat. Obviously, you got to get up to the front to qualify for the dash for cash. What might we see you do if you have a shot at it that last lap and got to pass the car? Yeah, well, I cut you a break in that truck race a couple years ago, so I don't know if I'll do that this time. 100 grand's on the line, so anything happens. But, uh, but no, we just got to settle in and see what everybody, see what everybody else does and just uh, let the knuckleheads get out of the way and then kind of get a smooth sail and, and make the most of it. 10 4, but thanks for that break and good luck today. We want to see a race for that 100 grand and let's see what you got. All right, boys, thank you. Have a good day as well. Bristol is unique. It's special. Not one pit road, but two. The guys covering it for us Chris Neville, Vince Welsh, Matt Yoakum. What's up, Chris? Well, it's a beautiful day down here on pit lane, and Brendan Gaughan, he's going to start seventh. He had a great car in practice. He just screwed up in qualifying, got his tires dirty. He said he is focused on the Xfinity Series regulars and that dash for cash. Brendan Gaughan, he's got one thing on his mind. That's $100,000. Matt Yoakum? Justin Allgaier won here six years ago, but he said it's like racing with a clean sheet of paper. So many questions with a lot of answers. The biggest is how aggressive will the drivers be in this first heat? His car was stellar rolling the bottom, great up top. He feels pretty confident about his chances later today. Vince Welsh. 19-year-old Eric Jones grew up running the short tracks of Michigan. He's familiar with heats and a main, so this is nothing new to him, and his strategy won't be any different either. He'll start from the pole in this heat, and he says, protect the car. Don't wreck. At all costs, don't wreck. But protect the car, get a good starting spot for the main, and then go race it. And he's got some good drivers around him, Vince. When you talk about the history here at Bristol Motor Speedway, on the front row with him for Heat 1, Kyle Larson, a runner up here three times. And right behind him, his teammate, the all-time winner when it comes to Xfinity Racing at Bristol, Kyle Busch, eight victories here. You look at the numbers for today's event as we listen in to Team 42. All right, we'll try to up share the 20 and choose the top. We'll try to get you up there in line as quick as we can here. Just try to keep the fenders clean. Nothing stupid here. We got 200 laps, so we got folks on 50. It doesn't matter. Let's just be smart. Well, you know, anytime you have a plan and you're sure of something in NASCAR, it uh, sometimes it flops around on you. You thought that Eric Jones would take the high side. Eric's on the bottom. I like that decision early, Brad. Eric's got the choice. He can get the jump, get it maybe Larson cleared by the time he gets to one. Are you comfortable with him taking the high side? Because here they come. Well, I think Eric's made the right call on the bottom, but we're going to find out. Racing first heat race, Xfinity Series FS1. Here we go. 50 laps to set up the inside row of the main. Eric Jones taking the green flag and down into turn one. Looks like it's going to work for him. The car hung on really well, got a little tight up off the corner, but great side-by-side -side battle for second with Eric Jones in the lead. I think that was a great picture of what you get here at Bristol. He rushed it through the center because he wanted to make sure he cleared Larson. It made him push off. That's the delicate balance you have here when you run through the middle of the corner, not getting too much speed on exit. Look at the Fox box, top of your screen. The drivers highlighted in red. The ones right now eligible to move on and compete for the dash for cash in the main. Eric Jones leading the race. Justin Allgaier fourth and not too far behind them. A couple of other series regulars. Darrell Wallace Jr. inside of Ross Chastain. This is good into the corner. 
Ross Chastain has been looking for forward to this dash for cash. We've seen steady speed and improvement from that four car, and Ross was really looking forward to getting a chance to, to race for the dash for cash. There are a couple of spots out of position right now. They've got to settle it amongst themselves and try to go get those others. And he's fighting Daryl Hard, and you're probably asking yourself right now, why? It's a 50-lap heat race. Well, this is the transfer spot right here. This is the transfer spot for a chance at 100 grand. And you see how he gets in the corner a little too hard and high? Oh, Up in those marbles, clear, exactly clear, what we were clear, talking clear. about Coming earlier in the race. Inside. So easy to do that. Make sure you clean them off. Here's a look at what happened. Darrell Wallace Jr. inside of the red number four of Ross Chastain gets up out of the groove. How, how much does this place tempt you to do that, Brad? Just drive in a little bit deeper. If I get in a little bit further, I can pass this guy. Yeah, I mean, the, the high lane has a lot of speed, but it's so, so treacherous. In order to make the most of that speed, you've got to roll speed through the corner, or you've got to roll the gas and, and get off the brakes and do all those things. And if you miss it by that much, this is what happens right here. Nice save. You know how talented Chastain is. He used to drive for you. Yes, and he's done a really good job. This isn't a team that's known for having the, the most amount of funding in the garage, and he's making the most of his opportunity despite that. It's getting fun at the front, Adam. Kyle Busch came in there and started running the bottom and got up beside Larson. Larson moved a little bit higher and was able to pull back around Busch. I think Eric Jones may be holding Kyle up a bit. These guys are... When I say holding Kyle up a bit, I'm, I'm talking both of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, we talk about one of the other things that's really hard about this track is that qualifying was on the bottom of the racetrack. That's where all the speed was. But now we're in the race. We're only 10 laps in, and you can see them. They're already starting to climb up the track. Sometimes it takes Michael a little bit different setup to run up top than what it does on the bottom. And I'm sure his team will be watching this for uh, the breaks in between to make an adjustment to his car. I think about a 50-lap heat, and Larry, it can be stressful on a crew chief on how you handle this getting ready for the 200-lap main. Well, I don't know if it's stressful or not, Adam, because the rules of the heat, unless you have a flat tire, you cannot change tires during this 50 laps. I know we say 50 laps, but we're already 20% of the way through it. It'll go by so quick. 11 of 50 complete, but 12 on the board. Eric Jones has led every one of them battle for position here. Elliot Sadler, who struggled in qualifying, working inside of Brennan Poole, trying to get up to eight. Elliot, a two-time winner here in the Xfinity Series. Start Casey gets the patient. Still inside. You're clear. All clear. There you go. That's what you want to hear. All clear. Look at this move. Kyle Busch in the middle now, trying to get around Larson. Don't, don't you feel really good here, though, if you're Eric Jones? Because, you know, these cup guys, they're thinking about one thing, being ready to go in the 200 lap main. You know they're not going to aggravate you too much for a position, right? You do? Am, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about all that, Adam. We're trying to figure out right now for Kyle Busch and Kyle Larson how we win this main event. You know, how we're going to be good then. That's what it's all about for those guys. Right now it's NASCAR coming up next. Major League Baseball doubleheader. We start in the AL East, Blue Jays and Red Sox. David Ortiz trying to continue his hot start. 3.30 Eastern time. Then it's the NL East tonight. Michael Waltrip's Braves trying to get the Marlins. Braves got their first win of the year last night. Yeah, the Braves have gotten beat seven times in a row by the Marlins, but night after last night, we're on a roll now. We got our first win of the year. If these guys settled in, how do you feel 17 laps complete? Well, I don't want to settle in. If, if I'm either one of the two Kyles, Kyle Larson or Kyle Bush, I want to go up there and make this pass and win this heat race. I, I'm not really worried about anybody else. I want to be up front for the start of the, of the main event later on today. Uh, settling in, Adam, did you say? Uh, that? I don't think Kyle Bush understands that terminology, or you're thinking right now. He wants that spot. And like I said, they can make a minor adjustment after this heat. You want to give that car all it's got so you're correct with what you tell your crew chief you want to work on. If you're running around 90%, you're not going to get the, the info to the crew chief that you need. Almost halfway through our opening heat, Eric Jones started on poles, led every lap. Kyle Larson, Kyle Bush, Justin Allgaier, Brandon Jones, your top five here at Bristol. Look at that.
22 laps to go in our opening heat race here at Bristol, Tennessee. It's the Fitzgerald Glider Kits 300. Eric Jones has led every lap so far. Kyle Larson, Kyle Busch behind him. They had a spirited battle for second in traffic a moment ago. And when you look at Eric Jones, he is enjoying his ride out front. Kyle Busch a couple of positions behind, really working hard, Vince. You know, it's interesting that Chris Gale, Kyle's crew chief, was telling me before this heat that, you know, in practice and qualifying, you couldn't run the top, but they knew they were going to have to run the top in this heat. The problem is with Kyle Busch trying to pass Kyle Larson, you can never run any higher than Larson because he's always rim riding when available. So Kyle trying to figure out another way around Kyle Larson, and that's not easy. And those top two starting to gain some ground on Eric Jones. 19 to go. Maybe a little contact there. It looks like Kyle Larson's Larson. getting just a little bit loose entering the corner, but I saw Kyle get a little bit loose too. So, you know, they're definitely fighting a little bit of that handling up in the high lane. Really sideways off of turn four was Larson that lap. The other driver right now in position to move on and run for the dash for cash beyond Eric Jones would be Justin Allgaier. But Brandon Jones hanging behind him, and this thing has been really tight, although Allgaier's put some distance between himself now and Brandon Jones. Jones has a fast car, but he got hung up in that lap traffic. We saw Kyle Busch trying to work his way through and take advantage of to move on Larson. It didn't go well for Brandon Jones, and that has allowed Justin Allgaier to pull away from him. But also, Allgaier's closing in on our leaders as well. Adam, he's got a really good run right now. Last time by, he was the fastest car on the track. Allgaier won here in 2010. It was a, a one-two finish for Team Penske. You were you were runner-up to Allgaier that I, I day, right? I was a two right? that day. <laughs> Not a good feeling here, but you know, I think guys that the 18 is the fastest car here. He seems to be able to run right up to the 42, and they seem to both be able to catch the 20 when they're not in traffic. So it'll be interesting to see if he's going to keep his patience here for the next 14 laps to finish this heat. Well, I think those guys are, are learning. They're getting ready for the, the main later. Eric Jones is obviously right where he wants to be. Uh, I think Kyle is Kyle Larson has a slower car than Kyle Busch, so he knows he's going to have to have an adjustment or two uh, before the main. These guys are really looking forward to the main and trying to figure out what it's going to take to win that. And, and they're racing their rear ends off at the same time. I think this thing has gone exactly as Eric Jones would have hoped. I mean, he, he jump, jumped out front at the start and, and really has had no threat from the two guys behind him. And even if he did, he's got a lot of separation back to those other guys when you talk about eligibility for the dash for cash. So Jones, who's leading laps here at Bristol for the first time in any series on cruise control for the moment with 11 laps to go. Another guy that's on cruise control is Justin Algar. He's our second dash for cash guy at this point in that seven car. So Justin's really good at this racetrack. You talked about that, Adam, and this is a really a, a smooth race for him, preparing him to go after that 100,000 in the main. And this team won $100,000 on two different occasions a year ago via the dash for cash with Regan Smith behind the wheel. Got it done at Dover and Indianapolis. I talked to a couple of guys in the garage area and saw Regan Smith said on Twitter, I love the format. I can't wait to watch the races today. There's so much buzz here in Bristol about the heats that we're having here in the Xfinity Series. This is a good way to overcome a poor qualifying effort and gain some track position. Elliot Sadler's qualifying run was, was not what he expected, but yet he's able to move up. He just passed Dakota Armstrong. Put Sadler up into the A spot, Larry. So uh, Elliott's taking advantage of this, uh, this, this heat so he can get a better starting spot in the main. You know, I want to keep updating the rules of this heat race. When I look right now, Eric Jones has lapped all but the top 10 drivers. No matter how many laps you're down, when we get to the main, Everyone starts on the equal lap. So even going a lap down like Ross Chastain and Jeff Green, Matt Tiff, you still start the main on equal laps with everyone else. But, but watching, Larry, what Eric Jones is doing in, in a 50-lap heat, putting drivers a lap down, it reminds me of how difficult this track is. No matter how good your car is, no matter what position you're running in, you are always working in and around other vehicles. And, and Larry brought up a great point. That's one of the, the things about the heat race that makes it so much different. Is you're going to be able to get that lap back. Uh, if you think of it that way, and brand new tires, and an adjustment to your car, and you get a ham sandwich or something to eat and drink in between to really think about it. 
Uh, so that's really going to change the way this race plays out later today. And you know, the, the, the lap cars, the, the more of them you catch, the better they get, Adam. And that makes it even more difficult, especially when it comes to picking your lane, which way you want to try to pass a car. Brennan Poole did a great job of just laying over out of Eric Jones's way there. But uh, in the main, that won't be so easy, and that really mixes things up. Two laps to go in our opening heat. Eric Jones, who won the pole earlier today, has led white flag when you get every here. lap. He'll get the white flag this time around. Should remind you there is no overtime in the heats, just in the main. So that will not be a factor today in these two 50-lap shootouts. Jones down the back straightaway, half a lap away from locking in pole position in the main. Fastest qualifier leads every lap in the heat. Great start to the day for Eric we'll Jones. We will stay on track. We will stay on track. Just back it way down. We're gonna we're gonna say that was a huge success for Jones and also Justin Algar. He now I'll will think have about a what you had there. We'll talk about it when we get a break. And one of the keys as well here is the 20 by winning this heat gets automatic lane choice for the main event here later. Eric Jones, Kyle Larson, Kyle Busch, Justin Allgaier, Brandon Jones, the top five in heat one. Jones and Allgaier, the two drivers running for the Xfinity Championship that had the top two spots in this opening heat, which means this. They are dash for cash eligible. When we get set for the main later on, it's all right here on FS1. Tonight, UFC Fight Night returns to Fox as two of the top UFC top lightweights collide. Glover Teixeira squares off against former world champion Rashad Evans, plus Rose Namajunas takes on Tisha Torres. 6 p.m. Eastern on your local Fox station or watch it on Fox Sports Go. Yeah, it, Evans was winner of the Ultimate Fighter in Season 2, so one tough guy. Tonight, 6 p.m. Eastern on Fox. Welcome back to Bristol Motor Speedway inside the Hollywood Hotel. I'm Danielle Trotta alongside crew chief Larry McReynolds recapping the first of two heats, setting you up for the 200-lap main event here for the Xfinity Series. And here are the results. If you're just tuning in, you didn't miss much, Larry. Eric Jones led all 50 laps. We stressed it, though, the importance of qualifying earlier. He started on the pole. It has to be a moral victory. He beat <laughs> Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch did not lead a lap in that heat, but did finish third. He led qualifying. He got a win there. 
Benny starts heat one. He wins that. Some momentum, yes, for Eric Jones. And you saw Justin Algar, who actually finished there in the fourth position. He will be qualified for Dash for the Cash. In fact, he's a former winner here in Xfinity at Bristol Motor Speedway. Still a lot more racing to come at Bristol Motor Speedway next. We go racing. It's heat number two on FS1. Stay with us. Sorry. Um... Hey guys, Joey Geese here. Just got done with qualifying the driver's meeting. I head back to Holler, get some lunch, and go see if we can get ourselves a shot at $100,000. What I would do with $100,000, or I'd probably need to pass some of that off to, to my dad. You know, to have that much money on the line is uh, awesome. It's definitely going to raise the intensity of the race, and uh, I just want to be the one who takes home the 100 grand and can go celebrate afterwards. You heard from Eric Jones. He is in the running for $100,000. He just won the first heat race, led all 50 laps. Justin Allgaier advancing as well. Both gentlemen qualify for the Dash for Cash dough that's on the line today. We are in the midst of two heat races, the first time in Xfinity Series history. Today is the debut of the Dash for Cash program at Bristol Motor Speedway. We have our first heat winner standing by now. Let's go down to Vince Welch. Yeah, mission accomplished to qualify for Dash for Cash. And you told me beforehand, uh, protect the car and protect your position. You were able to do both of those. How was the car as you look ahead of the main? Yeah, we did everything we needed to right there. And um, it was good. It was actually a little bit better than I thought it would be. And once we kind of got moved up to the top, uh, I was pretty happy with it overall. Just lacked a little bit of forward drive. But, um, you know, we, we rolled the center really good, which is what kept us out front. So um, we'll make a few adjustments on it for the race. But really happy with the GameStop Camry. And, uh, nice to be able to start where we qualified up front and uh, hopefully we can keep it up there for 200 more laps. Started first, finished first. Eric Jones. Matt? Vince, a new hat for the driver. 
a new decal across the, the windshield for the car. So when you're looking at it, Justin Allgaier, did you struggle more, did you feel like, in that 50-lap heat than you expected? Well, our helmet Chevy was a little bit tighter than what we thought it was going to be, uh, obviously moving up up the racetrack and getting widened out. You know, we wanted to make sure that we were consistent and, and obviously make it into the dash for cash. We did that. Uh, now we can go to work. Jason Burdett and the guys can go to work and make it just a little bit better. And I feel like uh, on the bottom and through traffic is where we really excelled right there through that heat race. So can't thank Xfinity Comcast for all they do for the dash for cash program to have it here. And look forward to uh, a fun 200 laps later. He won here six years ago. This one, though, could pay a whole lot more money. Chris? Well, Kyle Larson had Eric Jones out front and Kyle Busch all over his bumper. Kyle, do you feel pretty good about the car? Are you going to take some pretty big swings and adjustments here during the break? I mean, I think we're okay. I, I definitely think uh, we probably had a harder heat race. Um, so, you know, the 18 was quite a bit faster than I was, but um, probably take some big swings here to tighten me up. I was really loose, really, really loose. Um, so once we get the, the rear secured on exit, I could probably you know, start moving around and stuff, but I was kind of just trying to hold him off as much as I could. I, you know, I knew he wasn't going to pressure me a ton uh, with it, you know, not really meaning a whole lot for the cup guys in this race. But, um, yeah, he's, uh, I think the 18 is definitely the best. But um, I think a couple adjustments in our Belkin Chevy should be pretty good. Thanks, Kyle. Danielle? All right, thanks so much. You can follow along with the four Dash for Cash qualifiers today. They'll have red decals on their windshield. It's heat number two next. Today it's an MLB doubleheader right here on FS1 as the defending AL East champion Blue Jays take on David Ortiz and the Red Sox. Then it's Larry's Atlanta Braves versus the Marlins 7 p.m. Eastern. And here is the lineup for game number one. Well, remember Ortiz retiring at the end of the season trying to do what he's done a lot lately and hit 30 home runs and 100 RBIs in the same season. By default as a Yankees fan, that means I'm pulling for the Blue Jays this afternoon as we head upstairs back to the booth. Guys, it was Eric Jones who hit the home run in heat number one, if you will. Yeah, one heat down, one to go. What do you think, gentlemen? I think it played out perfectly for the guys that uh, had a plan, and that was Eric Jones just win the race from the pole. He had a lot of pressure from Kyle Busch and Kyle Larson early. Kyle Busch faded at the end. Kyle Larson needs some adjustments. What I love most about this format is we're going to give somebody 100 grand this afternoon. If you're the top finishing Xfinity regular, that's going to happen. But can anybody beat Kyle Busch, and what kind of adjustments will Kyle Larson make in order to try to do that? What did you see there, Brad? Well, I see, Michael, you're talking about the main. I'm not worried about the main. <laughs> we got another heat race to go. And you know what? I'm thinking about these heats, and I remember back back from my local racing days that usually when you have heat races, you always have one that's calm and one that's not calm. <laughs> so I'm looking at this one going, mm, look out. 
And, and, and I think that means a setup maybe for a little bit of an upset when it comes to these guys that qualify for the dash for cash. Yeah, and, and I love that. We're going to have Daniel Suarez up front, but he hit the wall qualifying. Mm -hmm. I don't know what kind of effect that will have on his car. And there's a lot of other guys that are licking their chops wanting to join Justin Algar and Eric Jones along with Suarez if things go as he plans to be a part of this race. Ty Dillon is in this heat, but but then you got Blake Cook, Jeb Burton. If one of those guys could, could get a little help, some maybe <laughs> doesn't go quite right at the front, they could put Put themselves in position for a hundred grand and it won't take much one little slip up like we talked and the whole field can be scattered like i said we've already had daniel suarez make contact with the wall we don't know how damaged his car is we have a lot of cars that have a great shot of transferring you game. know the only heat i'm ever in is the daytona duels and the second one's usually kind of wild better and, watch and the other driver to keep an eye on here in heat two that'd be your teammate joey logano oh by the way he led all 300 laps here a year ago Finish. Back live at Bristol Motor Speedway, getting set for Heat 2 in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Fox Sports Supports is proud to team up with merging vets and players dedicated to ensuring our nation's warriors can be as productive off the field as they were on it by joining combat veterans with former athletes to form a common bond over dedication and teamwork. Visit FoxSportsSupports.com to learn more. I mentioned going to break, keep an eye on Joey Logano and Heat 2, the defending race winner, rolling off third. Lap cars is going to be the action, so I uh, keep me updated on cars coming ahead of me and what lane they've been running to try to help there. Also, gaps behind me to the guy uh, behind before I start passing cars is going to change my approach on what I do. I love that. He's just telling his spotter what kind of information he's expecting. And this is a guy that led every lap a year ago. You don't think these guys have to cross every T and dot every I if they're going to win. He wants to know the gap behind him because that will dictate, Brad, whether he dives to the bottom or not and tries to make a pass. He got somebody right on him. He might not take that chance. And one of the drivers with their eye on the big prize, the dash for cash, Ty Dillon, a series regular who starts fifth. They left his pit signs on the 95 toolbox or whatever, whoever used them last week. So we've got some uh, uh, Newman 31s with the one taped off where it's just a neon three overhanging pit sign. How big of a problem is that for a driver at Bristol? 
Adam, well, you'll have that in show business. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like uh, in racing, there's always a little bit of adversity to overcome. Sometimes it's on the racetrack. Sometimes it's on pit road. But uh, Ty's a great dra driver. I'm sure he'll work his way around that one. Mention the 95, the Sprint Cup car that he pilots sometimes here in 2016. Double duty this weekend for Ty. Driving the 14, filling in for Tony Stewart. And I'm curious how that's going to help him here today. Uh, you know, as a driver myself who grew up uh, running the, what was at that time, the Xfinity Series only, and now growing into where, you know, a double dip back and forth every once in a while running in both series. I can remember those days where you first got the opportunity to ride in the Cup Series, to get a great car over there, how much better you would feel in your Xfinity Series car. So I think this is a, a big chance for Ty to, to really learn from that experience of double dipping and hopefully uh, have a great day. I said earlier during qualifying, the dash for cash in NASCAR is kind of like the ultimate fighter in UFC, a reality show where if you win, you get a six-figure contract with UFC, and uh, Joanna and Claudia, Michael, they flat <laughs> don't like each it's other. Just, it doesn't go well when those two get <laughs> together, and we're going to see some of that. Some of the biggest UFC stars come from the ultimate fighter, Nate Diaz, Rashad Evans, Forrest Griffin. I mean, these guys are tough. They fought their way through the ultimate fighter onto the UFC. Just like Brad Keselowski, fought his way into NASCAR, knocking down doors, and here he is, a Sprint Cup champion, getting to work on television with us. So. Well, well, thank you, Adam, but uh, <laughs> losing and racing is not fun, but it doesn't hurt as much as it does <laughs> in UFC. So. It just hurts your pride, right? Yeah, you don't have a pride. broken nose. Yeah. Well, I remember the last time we had Brad up here with us, Kyle Busch lost a tough one out in California, and there was a lot of action that went on in those last couple of laps. You were a big part of all that coverage. We had a lot of fun with that race, and I wouldn't doubt we might see something like that here in either this heat right here or the next main. All right, so heat one is in the books. If you're just joining us, Eric Jones started on pole, led every lap. It will be Austin Dillon that leads him to the green in heat two. Joining him on the front row, series regular and point leader, Daniel Suarez. We're going green in a moment. Right now we're going trackside to get the command. And now, for the most famous words of motorsports, please welcome your Grand Marshal from Kennesaw, Georgia, Xfinity customer Matt Anderson. Drivers, start your engines! That's what I'm talking about. Well, he's pumped. <laughs> he wants to see some heat racing. And I do, too. Who's going to win Heat 2 and get a starting spot on the front row for the main? Who's going to make themselves eligible for the $100,000 Dash for Cash? We'll find out next on FS1.
Obviously coming into the 2016 season, the addition of the chase this year, you're gonna have to be consistent and, and you're gonna have to be trying to win races. Win, that's all we wanna do. That's gonna lock us in the chase and I think we can do it. I definitely think that it's gonna be a lot of fun and I think everybody here is excited about it. They thought of everything in the NASCAR Xfinity Series when it comes to the Dash for Cash. You win two $100,000 prizes, equivalent to a win, which means you would be in the chase come September. It just keeps coming. You know, you win money, you, you get a berth in the chase. It's all about the Dash for Cash. All right, let's get a few reports on these drivers that make up Heat 2. We start downstairs with Matt Yoakum. Austin Dillon inside row one. I spoke to his crew chief, Danny Stock, but I said, typically at Daytona in the duel, if the first one is clean, the second one is rather exciting. And he told me, I was thinking the exact same thing. Now, their goal is simple. They're not eligible for the cash, but they want a front row starting spot for the main coming up a little bit later. Their car was great. Wherever Austin won the run, they felt like they were one of the top three cars here today in Bristol, Chris. Well, Blake Cook was quickest in final practice yesterday. He said this morning they just over-adjusted for a cool track in qualifying. This team, they were brand new at Daytona, and that $100,000, well, it would go a long way, especially since they just signed paperwork for a new shop this week. Vince? Well, it's been a bit of a rocky weekend for the points leader, Daniel Suarez. The car was not where the team wanted it after in the, during that first practice. And then in qualifying, Suarez actually got into the wall. But the good news is the damage was minimal and cosmetic. Crew Chief Scott Graves said they have a simple goal, be in a dash for cash qualifying position at the end of this race. That means one of the top two spots of our Xfinity Series points getters. Adam? And the last time we were here, Vince, Daniel Suarez won $100,000 in August via the Dash for Cash. Let's check in with driver 11, Blake Cook. I get a little bit excited about this racetrack in the next couple coming up. So all the fenders on it, and we'll be happy at the end. See you in a little while. Crew Chief Chris Rice talking to his driver. Cook rolls off seventh. And third in line in this heat of those drivers trying to advance on and be eligible for the dash for cash. Yeah, he's going to have a keen eye on that three car of Ty Dillon trying to race up there and wrestle that spot away from him for a chance to run for 100 grand later today. I'll tell you what I'm really curious about, boys, is the 19 and if that damage is truly cosmetic, because we're going to find out here. They're not going to the back, so whatever they uh, did to the car, or they must not have done anything to it to not have to follow the back. Uh, we're going to find out if it's it's okay or not. And Adam, you said he won 100 grand here last fall. He was second here last spring to Joey Logano. So Daniel gets Daniel gets around this track really well. See if that car's up for the challenge. Austin Dillon chooses the inside lane, the second of two 50 lap heats underway at Bristol. What a start by Dillon. How about Logano wasting no time? Ty Dillon is going to be able to clear Daniel Suarez and grab that third spot. Gives him a bit of a cushion over Blake Cook, who's riding back there in the back half of the top 10. It looked like at the start there that Daniel might have spun his tires just a little bit in that high lane. Really easy to do that with these Xfinity cars because keep in mind, these are the tires they qualified on. They've got a few laps. They're scuffed. They pick up a lot of debris, uh, and that stays on the tires until they get a new heat cycle. Where most times when you see uh, the start of an event or after a pit stop, you have brand new tires that don't have all that rubber buildup and debris. A little bit easier to restart or start with. Yeah, and that's one thing about Suarez, Brad. He's, he's not gotten great restarts and starts this season. He's been in a position to win races. Oh, problems for Logano. I'm not sure what happened there. Looked like he was completely off the pace coming off of turn two. Yeah, almost hit the wall off of turn two. The car must have stepped out on him a little bit. Good move by Dylan to grab that position. Popped out of gear. Ah. Popped out of gear, copy. Ooh, that's Hi, not what you want to hear. That's uh, If it pops out of gear once, it's going to do it again. And get a bungee cord ready to put in that thing for the feature. Copy that. <laughs> How cool is it to hear that? See the cars racing and know that the feature's ahead. Well, we got to get some talking for... points because it's a main, but. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we we, we got to update him on the terminology. <laughs> you think he'll start driving maybe with one hand? Boy, Michael, this track is hard enough to drive with two hands. Yeah. I can't imagine having to drive with one hand and hold the gear shifter in. And this is not what you want to hear if you're a crew chief, Larry McReynolds. Yeah. 
what would a bungee cord do? What, what he could do is hook it somewhere on a bracket on the right side of the seat. Once he gets it in high gear, he can hook it around that shift lever and that would hold it in. Now, you can only make minor adjustments to the car as far as wedge, track bar, because they're treating the, the main just an extension of the heat. But you know what? I believe Joey Logano could put a bungee cord in his driver's uniform pocket. <laughs> he could pull that operation off himself, couldn't he? Oh, Larry, those things never happen. <laughs> of course they don't. <laughs> Are you giving away secrets, Larry McReynolds? Come on now. All I do is talk about the secrets now. I don't have any anymore. Look at the way Logano is able to keep pace with Ty Dillon. Brother Austin is driving away, but uh, Logano is certainly as fast or maybe even faster than Ty. To update everyone on how this works, the top two drivers in this heat, eligible for Xfinity Series points, move on to the main, and they join Eric Jones and Justin Allgaier as drivers going for the $100,000 Dash for Cash bonus. Right now, it would be Ty Dillon, Daniel Suarez, who are running uh, second and fourth respectively, and you see them highlighted top of your screen. And now we remind you that tomorrow our weekend continues from Thunder Valley, 1230 Eastern Time on Fox. It's the eighth race of the year for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. And what a start to the 2016 season we've had. Such great action, close finishes, and some dominance here lately by Kyle Busch. And Brad, you've already got a win. So if things don't go your way on the short track here at Bristol, you're fine. You're already locked into the playoffs. You know, coming to Bristol, it's always a little bit uh, intimidating and scary because you know anything can happen to you. It doesn't have to be your fault. You get caught up in a wreck or, or torn up. Uh, but when you have a win under your belt early in the season, you don't worry about that. You just go race Bristol and you can race it aggressively. So I'm looking forward to tomorrow's race. I'm going to race aggressively. Speaking of aggressive, Harvick starting to get after Eric Almirola here 15 laps in. Yeah, and this is something we see all the time as the tires get a little heat in them. Kevin Harvick is so good about managing his tires and, and understanding what that car needs for the long run, Chris Neville, and it appears he has it today. He's really going strong. Well, it was a little bit surprising to see Kevin Harvick starting sixth in this heat. He just got it all wrong in qualifying earlier today. Talking with his crew chief, Dave Ellens, they said, we just wanted to go for pole. We got the car way too loose, so that's why we qualified back. But right now, as that track is starting to come in up high, Dave Ellens said that's going to play to their favor. Well, those junior motorsports cars last week at Texas, they had what it took on the long run. And, and I think that's something you're going to have to have in the main a little bit later today as you see J.J. Yaley heading to pit road. Going to lose some laps here, but as Larry pointed out earlier, everybody goes back to level playing field as we begin the main later. Harvick able to get around Almirola for the position. That was tight. Yeah, Harvick wasn't clear. He just took the spot. And so, <laughs> sometimes you have to do that here because that preferred groove is so narrow. It's right up against the high lane, and you just kind of lean on a guy a little bit and say, hey, look, if you don't let me in, we're both going to wreck. And I think Eric saw that and said, all right, let's get to the main. And, and Brad, in that case, how long does it take you to get over being mad at that guy for cutting you off a bit? Is it just something you got to put in your rearview mirror and forget it, or does it just stick with you for a while? Well, I think, you know, it's, it's different for every driver. But for me, I think it depends on the situation. A lap or two earlier, I saw Eric get a little bit loose in one and two, and that's how Kevin got to him to begin with. So when something like that happens, you tend to be a little bit more forgiving. Now, if it's in lap traffic and a move like that happens to you, ah. you get mad <laughs> and you do it back. Yeah, they, you took something from me that you didn't deserve, and I'm going to get it back. That seems to be kind of the sentiment you hear here a lot here at Bristol. In a cup race, 500 laps, your blood pressure spikes. How many times would you say, Brad? Yeah, exit off the floor. Make a little adjustment there. Well, Don't it depends on how fast your car is. <laughs> if your car is really fast, it doesn't spike at all. But, uh, you know, I see the 22 here. His blood pressure right now is spiked because he knows he's a little bit faster than that three. He's trying to work different grooves. You see him, he's got a diamond in the corner. So he runs down the hill on exit. That means he comes down the banking, uh, especially in three and four, you're seeing that. Trying to get that run, keep the pressure on tie, maybe force a mistake. You always kind of say at a short track, and we were talking about the balance of patience and aggression, you, you get down to the last 50, 70 laps, and that's when you push the go button. A couple of 50-lap heats, a 200-lap main. When is the go button today for these drivers, when you really ratchet up the aggression? Well, Adam, I don't think you can wait too long. This is only a 200-lap main coming up, and laps at Bristol go by in 15 seconds. It takes no time at all for this race to, to run by. Uh, so if you're going to spend that whole race being patient, 
And if you're not in the lead, you're not going to get there. This is one fast pizza delivery machine here. <laughs> Kevin Harvin, the last time by, had a couple of tents over our leaders, and he drove right up to the back of Suarez in that 88 car. So uh, Harvick knows he's got the machine he can win this main with this afternoon. Be interesting to see if he decides to use that slide job to grab the next spot away like he did with Amarola. And Harvick, going back to what we were just talking about earlier, is a, a perfect example. His car has great long run speed, which means he needs to get these spots right now in this heat because he's not going to have that chance to do it in the main. He's going to have a couple long runs in the main, but it takes him a while for his car to come in. And so he's in that window right now where his cars come in. Like you said, Michael, he's really fast. He's got to get these spots right now because he's probably not going to get them early in the race. And, and no one's going to give you the top. I mean, that's just not going to happen. So you've got to dive to the bottom. And Kevin's car, when he was running faster than the leaders, was right up there next to the wall, just like he is now. Now he's caught traffic. We're going to see how versatile that setup is and is if he's able to go to the bottom and make the move. These guys are all running in contact with the leaders, so this is the pack. And he, he's not the only one that, that's caught up in traffic. Look at Austin Dillon out front. Ty is right behind him now in second, his younger brother. Joey Logano is there. In fact, you can almost throw a blanket over those top five because Suarez and Harvick closing in as well. Great racing as we've just passed halfway in our second heat at Bristol. Only one second separates the top five. That's really close <laughs> racing. Especially when you're talking about a track like Bristol, where the top speed's about 140 mile an hour. And where you finish this heat determines where you line up in the main. Drivers in heat two will make up the outside lane later on today. Through the traffic, Austin Dillon able to pull away from his younger, just a younger brother, just a bit. He's just his younger brother by a bit. He's <laughs> able to pull away just a bit. What a great run for both those Dillons to have those cars up front. We saw the speed that Austin needed to win the race late at California. Ty's year has been a bit of a struggle. I think he had the best car he's had all year at Texas, only to have a tire problem late that relegated him back uh, uh, some spots. But it's good to see the speed coming to Bristol as well. Harvick's right there. Gosh, he's fast just trying to get any little break or catch any little break he can to get by these guys. Hasn't caught one yet, so he's going to keep that pressure on. And he's only got 14 laps, though. And, Brad, watch how close Harvick has to run to Suarez. One little slip by Suarez, and, and he wrecks into him. That's what makes it so tough here at Bristol. Well, that's part of putting the pressure on, is he wants Suarez to know that. He wants Suarez to know, look, if you make a mistake, I'm going to wreck you, and it's going to be your fault. That's part of being a driver. And if you wreck here in the heat, you can't go to a backup, and, and there's only 20 minutes in between our, our second heat and the main. So if you get in trouble right now, it's going to be a long rest of the afternoon, and you're not going to have a good finish. Suarez just can't quite stay up to the bumper of Logano, which is telling Harvick, you know, the, this is the guy. This is the weak leak in the chain. I need to get on him. And look at the way Suarez diamonds that corner. We hear people talk about that. I know my brother used to win race, race, race after race here, running up high in the middle and then down low off. Oh, sideways there. That's what Suarez is doing right now to hold off Harvick. Down to 11 laps to go in our second heat race. Opening one of the day went to Eric Jones. Austin Dillon started on pole, has led every lap in heat two. Watch this car hop out on him a bit. Well, they're going to hop out, aren't they? When, when that happens, <laughs> yes. <laughs> How about that, Larry? With 10 laps to go, Daniel Suarez is kind of between a rock and a hard place. He's, he's getting his rear bumper beat off by Kevin Harvick. But even if he gives that spot up, he still has cushion over Jeb Burton, so he would still be in the ga dash for the cash. Yeah, but he's a racer. Larry, racers don't just give spots up. And that's what I ones. said at the top of the show. Brendan Gaughan said it. Go like hell. But, but I say this. We talk about patience and aggression. I think we're going to go to a whole new level when the green flag goes in the air for the main. I, I think these guys have been fairly tame for Bristol when you look at the two heats. Am, am I right or wrong here? It's not over yet, Adam. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with you 100%, Adam. And also, we've got the, some of the best drivers in the world that are going to be able to work on their cars a bit sit down and have a conversation with their crew chief about what they were feeling, make some adjustments. That's going to make these cars even faster yet. Suarez is driven back up to the bumper of Logano. 
Maybe he wants to go on the offense. He's been playing defense for about 50 laps or 40 laps. Let's see if he can go offensively here. Well, I saw the 22 slip up just a little bit in one and two. I think he's starting to lose a little bit of the handling as well. Over those bumps, it's really difficult, especially as the tires fall off. The car just slips and slides around. It's very easy to make a mistake. Well, you can see that black patch as we as we run around the track. Off turn two, there's a big patch that they've uh, put over there off turn two. How much does that upset your car? Can you feel it bounce around when you hit yeah, that? The patch there is uh, obviously where something's happened to the surface. Right and they had to patch it. Yes, absolutely. They've had to patch it with another piece of concrete. And, you know, whenever you patch something, you can never get it right. Just like when you're on the freeway and you drive over a patch on the freeway, there's a bump. Same here, except for you're going 140 mile an hour <laughs> and pushing your car to the limit, and it's going to slip. And someone's pushing you. Two to go at the line, two to go. Everything going as planned for Austin Dillon. Qualified second earlier this morning. Started on pole for heat number two. Coming around, going to see the white flag half a mile away from locking white in a front row starting position in the main. Eric Jones led all 50 laps in heat one. Austin Dillon going to go wire to wire in heat two on the front row with Jones in the main later on and your dash for cash advancers Ty Dillon Daniel Suarez in line for the one hundred thousand dollars. And now all those crew chiefs in the garage can take a big deep breath. They know they have made it through the heat. We can line up and go get after it in the main. Now the drivers that are going to run for $100,000. Eric Jones, Justin Allgaier, Ty Dillon, Daniel Suarez. One of those fellas buying dinner somewhere tonight. I hope it's. Get ready, a new season of The Ultimate Fighter about to begin. Team Joanna and Team Claudia will feature both women's strawweight and male light heavyweight competitors. It all begins a new season premiere Wednesday, 10 p.m. Eastern on FS1, plus 
Don't miss Tough Talk immediately following each new episode, The Ultimate Fighter, all season long. There is no love lost between those two girls right there, and Claude has been very vocal. She seriously wants a rematch with Johanna. That's how I feel with you from time to time when you a get rematch? a little ornery. Are we going to get in the octagon? <laughs> no, I don't think you could take me. <laughs> no one could take Austin Dillon in heat number two like Eric Jones in heat number one. Austin Dillon was dominating, but all said and done, Austin Dillon doesn't qualify for the dash for cash. He's not an Xfinity Series regular, if you will. It was his little brother, Tom. Hi, Dylan, who will advance along with Daniel Suarez. Yeah, and that's what's neat about this format. Yeah, the, the, the Dash for Cash winner would love to be the same guy celebrating with the, the race winning trophy, but we have a race within a race trying to win the race, trying to win that $100,000 as well. Two heats are now in the books. Uh, we have a 200 lap main coming up, but first we go down to the pits. Let's see Matt Yoakum. Mission complete for Austin Dillon for his heat. So, expectations, Jones will take the outside, you'll be on the bottom. Are you going to try to work a deal with the spotters to try to ease in or just play it straight up? Um, uh, we'll see here. I don't know. We'll uh, talk about it here in the next little bit. and uh, It could work. I might just want to try and get it, you know. I'd um, like to race, though, but we'll see. Uh, Reem Chevy's fast. Uh, I'm really proud of the guys. One of the best cars I've ever had here at Bristol. So, looking forward to uh, what's to come. What do you need to tweak on it the most? I'm getting ready to find out. Um, the whole field will be out there. I feel like we had a pretty good car. I'm a little tight, a little loose. You know, it's not like a big swing that I need or anything. I feel like our car is pretty competitive right there. Good luck, Chris. And Ty Dillon qualifies for the Dash for Cash, and you look like you had a really good car out there. Anything that you learned during the heat that you can use in the main? Um, you know, just you're kind of scrambling at the start there to uh, get positions. Our red cap Chevy really fired off really good, and uh, I don't know what happened to the 22 if he jumped out of gear, but saw an opportunity uh, and took it, and our car really held on good. And uh, was chasing down Austin there, he seemed like he was a little bit better later on in the run. I kind of came to him in traffic, and uh, you know when you're when you're that close and you're, you're running that high line, and the times are so close, it's hard to pick exactly what you want to do to your race car. But uh, we'll go to work here and uh, proud of the way we, we started with our red car cap Chevy. Thanks, Ty. Daniel. Ty Dillon, one of four drivers who could win $100,000 today. Possibly Austin Dillon, his brother, could win the trophy for this race. Of course, Austin, already an Xfinity Series winner earlier this season, getting the victory at Auto Club Speedway. Larry, best finish here, by the way, for Austin is third as we show you the results from heat number two. And these were the only drivers on the lead lap, the only drivers that Austin Dillon did not lap. But as I stressed earlier, when we go to the main, everybody starts with equal laps. Were guys playing chicken a little bit in your mind? Adam Alexander referred to that a little bit in heat number two. Oh, I don't know if they were playing chicken. They were doing everything <laughs> they could to stay on the lead lap and try to finish as high as they possibly could. Cautiously aggressive. I'm not sure if drivers can do both. Patiently aggressive. <laughs> we'll see. A 200 lap main coming your way on FS1 from Bristol. Stay with us.
Today, it's an MLB doubleheader on FS1, immediately following the Xfinity Series race from here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Larry McReynolds, it's the Boston Red Sox taking on the Blue Jays. And they beat the Blue Jays yesterday 5-3. Big Poppy in his final season just keeps on keeping on. Had an RBI double early in the game. Following that game, you have Larry's Atlanta Braves taking on the Marlins. There you see the diamond. And a little dirt, a throwback, if you will. Now NASCAR featuring heat racing for the first time in the Xfinity Series. Heat race number two in the books. Vince is with one of the gentlemen who advanced to the main in his dash for cash qualifier. Yeah, he likes to have that uh, red decal on the front of the car. That means he's eligible for $100,000. You started on the, the front row of the heat, and you didn't get off to a very good start. What happened? Well, um, I just put my tires a little bit. Uh, I'm, I don't even know who was behind me, but he pushed me a little bit, obviously, to help, to, to, to move forward. And sometimes when you do that, sometimes you help the guy in front, and sometimes you, you make him spin the tires. And when, when he spins the tires, you have to slow down. So that's what happened. He was trying to push me to try to go, uh, and it was a little bit too early because the, the two uh, wasn't going yet. And, and when, I, when I went and, and the two went, he was pushing me a little bit and I spilled my tires, but it's part of it. Uh, we have a, a complete race car. Uh, we are in the that for cars deal and, and that's, a, that's a good start of the day. Yep. So far, so good. Going to work on the balance a little bit here in the break. Matt? Vince, it's been one of those types of days for Joey Logano. Spilled his Coke, transmission issues. The team has installed a bungee cord. That way they can try to keep it in gear. But what do you need to fix most in the 22 to put it in victory lane later today? Oh, it's not that bad. <laughs> I mean, it sound a lot worse than what it well, is. We're trying to get the bad stuff out early. I see that. Um, no, I, I don't think this Fitzgerald uh, Mustang is that bad. I think it's actually pretty good. So, um, you know, we'll uh, we'll see. It's just hard to pass out there. The track's definitely going through a transition right now. Um, you know, I felt like we probably should have finished second there. Just, uh, I don't know why it popped out of gear. That's the first time it's happened in a long time for me. So it didn't happen again. So that's a good sign. Um, but you know, it's, uh, it's all about track position right now as this track goes through a transition and see where it goes to by the end of this race. And um, working lap traffic is probably the most um, important thing. You know, it could have been worse. Somebody could have shaken it up. I think somebody did. <laughs> I'm pretty I'm pretty sure my PR guy, Jeremy, I'm, I think he, he handed it to me. And I think he shook it before he gave me a nice cold swig. And I don't know. It's you know. tough in Thunder Valley, Chris. Well, Blake Cook didn't qualify for the $100,000 bonus, but Blake, you were quickest in final practice yesterday. Now that we've got 200 laps of racing in front of us, what do you think we're going to see in the main? Yeah, we were we were really good yesterday, and uh, we were a little bit too tight today, but thank goodness we had that heat race because now we can uh, make some adjustments and improve our car. But uh, I think the heat race is, is just extra practice for us. You know, it's not like I wasn't holding back. You know, this is a tough place here with tough competition, but I know my leaf filter guys are working hard to make my car faster so we can go past some more cars in the future. Thanks, Blake. For drivers like Blake Cook, who did not advance to the Dash for Cash $100,000 prize, like he said, a big trophy still up for grabs. 200 laps, the main event coming your way next from Bristol.
Welcome back to Bristol Motor Speedway. You're just in time for the main event, but quickly let's look back at the debut for the Dash for Cash heat races. Welcome inside the Hollywood Hotel. I'm Danielle Trotta alongside America's crew chief, Larry McReynolds. It's been a fun day so far. Two heats in the books, 50 laps apiece, Larry. Let's walk people through if they're just joining us. Eric Jones started out front in heat number one, and he didn't want to give up that top spot. It did not take him long. In fact, it took him 13 minutes to lead all 50 laps for heat number one. And how about Justin Allgaier for Junior Motorsports? Started fourth, finished fourth. That was enough to advance. Got his first career win here at Bristol in the Xfinity Series. How about heat number two? Ty Dillon starting fifth finishing second. And there you can see fighting off Joey Logano in that 22 car. Joey ended up finishing third. And, and look, Joey, the eyes of Joey, he looks concerned the heat race hadn't even started yet. How about Daniel Suarez also advancing with a fourth place finish after battling Kevin Harvick. It is Ty Dillon and Daniel Suarez advancing out of heat number two. We mentioned Eric Jones advancing after the win in heat number one and then came this tweet, Larry. Okay, so it's a work in progress. <laughs> we know we need to do the decals a little different for Richmond next week. NASCAR helping fans at home follow along with the four dash for cash qualifiers, having them sport red decals on the dash. Eric says that messes with the tear off. NASCAR says, don't worry, you only need the decal for the start of the race. Let's go down to Vince Welch. Jeb Burton has been one of the fastest this week. In fact, he was fastest in first round of qualifying, finished seventh in your heat race. He'll start 14th in the main. What kind of race car do you have to work with here in these final 200 laps? Well, we were really tight right there. Um, we've been fighting a loose end issue all weekend and moving up top um, fixed a lot of that. So we're really tight now to the center and uh, coming off. So Drew Blickenstover did a good job. I think right here we, we made a lot of adjustments that we probably couldn't make um, in regular race conditions. So that's going to help us out. And uh, I think we got a, a top top 10 car and, and we're going to make the best out of it. Thanks, Jeb. Adam. Well, Brendan Gunn finished sixth in his first heat. And Brendan, you said you had to go like hell in that first heat race. Now we've got the main in front of us. What's the strategy? I mean, now we just took 50 laps off the race. It, it, uh, I said we had to judge a New York Times bestseller after some chapter. We got chapter one in the books. And right now, I, uh, I'd love a softer tire here. That'd be awesome because then we could pass. You. I heard Kyle Busch talking how he, he could not, I guess, him and Kyle Larson battled, but he couldn't pass him. And Goodyear brings a great tire. It just it doesn't slow down. And they're, they're doing a good job. So in the main, we're starting six. The goal is restarts. Get guys on restarts when you can, and then uh, just hold them off because they're not going to be able to pass very well right now. Thanks, Brennan. Daniel? What would you do with $100,000? It's a good problem to have. The debut for Dash for Cash from Bristol. Coverage continues next.
A lot of action, two heats in the books already here from Bristol Motor Speedway. Here are your Dash for Cash qualifiers. Eric Jones, Justin Allgaier, Ty Dillon, Austin's little brother, and how about from Joe Gibbs Racing, Daniel Suarez, your four drivers competing for $100,000. FS1 has plenty of action on the network to follow all day long. After we go Xfinity Series Racing, from Bristol Motor Speedway, we tell you that tonight, UFC Fight Night returns to Fox as two of the UFC's top light heavyweights collide. Glover Teixeira squares off against Rashad Evans, plus Rose Namajunas takes on Tisha Torres. It all starts at 6 p.m. Eastern on your local Fox station or watch it live on Fox Sports Go. Those two ladies were teammates on the Ultimate Fighter in season 20, so. Larry Mack, full of nuggets, boys. You thought it was only NASCAR. He knows his uh, fighting, too. His, I'm just a sports fan. <laughs> his knowledge is over the top, just like these two. So, so we had a couple of heats. Now we set the stage for this 200 lap main. What are we going to see? I think what I learned is you're going to have to have some contact if you want to pass. We heard Brendan Gaughan talking about how difficult it was. So when you tune in to UFC tonight, you're going to see some bumping and banging. <laughs> but that's what's going to have to happen in this race because the groove is out next to the wall. You're going to see guys cut each other off for that space. You're going to see them pushing and shoving. As the laps wind off, the intensity goes up. We're going to see full contact racing here at Bristol. Well, you know what I'm really curious about is Eric Jones has looked really fast throughout the weekend. But in that heat race there, I thought Kyle Busch was the fastest car. So let's see if he can hold him off. It's pretty important that he does. He'd love to be able to win this race and win the dash for cash. But I'm not so sure that anybody can hold off Kyle Busch. But then again, Kyle Busch is starting kind of a little bit towards the back for him. He's starting in fifth. I, I like <laughs> row three. Kyle Busch, your teammate, Joey Logano, two drivers that really understand how to get around this place. And add Justin Algar to that list. Mm -hmm. He's won here before. He's an Xfinity regular. He's the guy that I think can go up there and contend with Eric Jones for that $100,000 bonus. You got me, right? It's $100,000 <laughs> to one of these Xfinity regulars if they're able to be the top finisher. Winning the race would be icing on the cake. Eric Jones wants the $100,000 but he really wants the trophy. Let's face it, he's yes. got his mind set on greener pastures. Absolutely. He wants the trophy. He wants to win the race. He wants to win the Dash for Cash. He wants to get locked in the chase, and he can do that all right now in this main. And the one guy we haven't mentioned, look here, in, inside of row two, Kyle Larson, a runner-up here on three different occasions, but another guy was great in practice. And also, I talked uh, after the heats. These talented racers are able to explain their crew chief the changes they need, the adjustments they want. Kyle Larson was loose. He couldn't do anything other than just Ride in that heat race, he gets that thing tightened up. You're right, Adam. He could be a real factor. You want to watch somebody come through the field? I give you Kevin Harvick, a driver that's won here five times but, but couldn't do much with the competition in the heat. He rolls from the 10th position. He will be a player before this thing wraps up. Let's go trackside, get the command for the main at Bristol. And now, for the most famous words of motorsports, please welcome your Grand Marshal, daughters of Tommy Fitzgerald Sr., Leah, Tiffany, and Lisa. Drivers, start your engines! Our third command of the day. We've already had two green flags, but the next one is the one that counts. 200 laps for the NASCAR Xfinity Series, live from Bristol next.
It's time for the 200 lap main here at Bristol Motor Speedway for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. What are the signal callers thinking? Let's hear from the crew chiefs down to Chris Neville. Well, Kevin Harvick, look, they have the dominant car in heat one, but only about 50 laps there to try and work his way through traffic. Dave, do you think he, he can work through the traffic uh, with 200 laps now? Yeah, I think the extra laps in the main, the main will help us out a lot. I think we're going to have a good car on the long run. Definitely showed the speed we wanted at the beginning of that race. Kevin Harvick looking for his sixth win here at Bristol. Vince? Chris Gabehart is the crew chief for Eric Jones in the 20. You finished runner-up to Kyle Busch twice this season. What do you need in your race car to get that extra spot and win this race for Eric today? Uh, really, I think we just need another 200 clean laps. Eric and the whole team's done a great job. The GameStop Toyota Camry's haul in the mail, man. We've been really happy with it. Just another 200 clean laps. I think we can do it. Thanks, Chris. Matt? And Dylan will start on the front row. So Danny Stockman, a lot of conversation before this main, whether you guys would try to work a deal at the start to try to get your man to the high side, or are you going to play it straight up? You know, I think it's uh, pretty much every man for himself right now. Uh, this is the, the main event here, and uh, I think we got a really good car. We, we, we had some good speed that first uh, or the, in, the, in the heat race there, and uh, just looking forward to seeing what we got now. Good luck. Austin Dillon, the winner in heat two, he starts on the front row with Eric Jones. We get our Ford Performance track facts. Last five Bristol races, one from the front row. And Joey Logano in a Ford, top Ford qualifier today. Led every lap in winning here last spring, Michael. Why don't I see why Bubba's stopping over on the back straightaway? Hey, Bubba Wallace, it's Michael and Brad up here in the booth. Uh, how'd the heat go? Did you make any adjustments? Are you ready for the, the main event here? Yeah, I believe so. Ah, was that a tasty <laughs> sip of cocoa there, buddy? <laughs> I needed it. It's getting a little hot in here. <laughs> it's getting hot in here. You better get with it. This action's going to get hot, heated up as well. I know push will come to shove in the main. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready to go. You know, that heat race was, was not how we wanted it to go, but uh, we'll have some fun. This is where it all pays for right here. So. This is what we practice for and everything. So excited to be here in Bristol. Have us a good day. Uh, we made a few adjustments after the heat race to get our Ford Mustang where we need to be. So we'll have some fun. Well, thank you, Bubba. We're all pulling for you here in the FS1 booth. Have a great race. All right. Thanks, Brett. That might have been the best Bubba, coat ever, right? Ever, ever. ever. <laughs> Pretty impressive. <laughs> Bubba starting the main in 13th. Kyle Busch rolls fifth. Have you guys there while uh, you watch 50 laps? Absolutely. Got it all figured out. We know any time. All depends how nice you want to be. And that's what we talked about in the open before the race, Adam. It's just how you want to play nice. And uh, these guys will, will certainly be cordial for a bit, but uh, you're going to have to get aggressive and physical if you want to make a pass, and that's what we're going to see later in the day. Hey, Brad, I got a question my brother told me to ask you. If arrow doesn't matter on a short track, why does everybody have the biggest spoiler they can get on the back of it? Because arrow matters on a short track. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Arrow matters everywhere nowadays, and that's part of why you want to be up front. And I think you're going to see some strategy of how to get up there. I think you're going to see cars that are going to stay out in pit cycles mm. because they know that's what it's going to take. So you're going to have to get up front and play some defense. And in those heats, we didn't see the tires fall off that much. These Goodyear tires have a lot of uh, durability in them. Them, so uh, you're right, strategy could be a big part of today. Eric Jones, the top qualifier of those two heat winners, selecting the outside lane he for the main. last minute the switch up there. I thought he was going to take the bottom. We'll be interested to see how this works because keep in mind, the original start is a little further down the racetrack. Uh, so sometimes the bottom lane ends up being the better lane. And, and we do treat this just like the original start of a race. Yeah, and that means that Dylan can't beat Jones to the line. That gives him an advantage. He thinks he can take, a, take advantage of that on the outside. And he does just that and pulls away from Dylan. Jones able to get the top spot. Austin trying to slide in front of his brother, Ty. Down low, the 42, that bright green car of Kyle Larson. He's not supposed to be down low. <laughs> I don't think he wants to be down low, but it's working for him. He's kind of holding serve. Usually on a restart, you can get away with this for about three or four laps before the top comes in, and he's almost clear right there of Ty Dillon. He's going to take it. That's tight. Makes it work, work off a of turn two. And Harvick, you talked about starting back in the 10th spot. He hasn't been able to get anywhere so far, but look at Justin Algar down on the bottom trying to make some ground up. 
Allgaier, one of those drivers running for the $100,000 bonus, slides up into line. He is in front of Joey Logano. And here comes Kyle Busch working the bottom lane for position. He saw Allgaier, Allgaier make it. He said, I'll give that a try. Tried to take the spot away from Joey Logano. Wasn't quite able to do it. Ooh, this is going to be interesting because Suarez is going to fill that gap behind him. It's going to be hard for Kyle to get back up. He might get trapped here on the bottom. Brendan Poole racing around Dakota Armstrong. I think I saw Poole get into the outside wall. He had a problem last week at Texas. Cut a tire, hit the wall. Just once again, early in the race, really slick up there. Got in those marbles, got stuck on. Top of three. Top of three. Nice and easy down here. Well, they oh. were three wide there. Ryan Top Reed with chest the down below him. Inside. Inside. Get him. Kyle got stuck there on the bottom, trying to make a move on the 22 car. He actually lost three spots. Normally, you would say, oh, no big deal. Long race, he'll get that back. This is not a long race. This is only a 200-lap race. He's going to have a tough time fighting out of it. Started fifth and back to ninth. When's the last time we said something like that about Kyle Busch in an Xfinity event? Well, it's been a while. <laughs> Maybe, a, you know, not this year we've ever said anything <laughs> like that. The only time he ever lost any position on the track was when he had a flat tire at California, and that was on the last lap. But that car was really impressive in the heat with the speed that it had. He just laid back off Kyle Larson at the end of that event. In order to win, you're going to have to get aggressive. Look at those side skirts bottoming out. How much do you feel that in the car, Brad? You feel every bump at this track. It might be a short track, but boy, is it rough, and you can feel it inside the car. It beats you up. You don't have to be going 200 mile an hour to get beat up, believe me. This is a tough physical race. Could that be hurting the handling of his car any? Is it, is it that abrupt where it could be loosening up the back of the car? Well, anytime the car bottoms out, it takes a little bit of grip away from the tires, so it, it certainly can be hurting him. Daniel Suarez is going to make a move here on Joey Logano, and he's going to clear him on the bottom. Joey hasn't been able to uh, get those runs he's looking for. Wow. And I think Power Suarez move. has been impressive since we went green back in the heat. Well, this was just a perfect textbook Bristol move. Logano gets a little high. Suarez sees an opening. And he jumps on it. And all those guys running for the $100,000, you see that red banner across the top of their windshield. Daniel Suarez, one of those. The guy leading the race in that category as well. Eric Jones, three-tenths of a second in front of Austin Dillon. As we see the battle here for eighth. Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch. And Kevin, now back to the lead. Kevin got a little high, and it gave Kyle an opportunity to look on the inside of him. Couldn't make that move work, but... Now it looks like Austin Dillon is closing in on our leader. They're just battling all over this place. Guys, I'm going to tell you, this is not going to last with Kevin Harvick and Kyle Busch running eighth and ninth with really fast race cars. They're going to start to push people out of the way, and they're going to make aggressive moves because they have to. That's what it's going to take to win this race and get up there to where Eric Jones is. 200 lap main today, 500 laps for the Sprint Cup Series tomorrow. You saw it bottom of your screen, 1230 Eastern time. Our coverage begins on your local Fox station. Now we're going to throw lap traffic into the equation. Getting through this traffic can really slow your momentum and open the door for the guy chasing you. Kyle Larson looked inside of Austin Dillon for second. Couldn't make it happen. It's Joey Gase, blue and white 52, right in front of Eric Jones. I've always thought this place has got to be the worst when you talk about a middle grind on a driver. You're never free and clear here. Absolutely. We used to call this the Tetris racetrack. Oh, oh look at this. what a move by Larson. That's exactly the type of move you have to make. He got outside of the two car. He's going to try to play a little bit of uh, that Tetris block move right here that I was just about to say. And it's going to get squeezed. Not going to be able to pull it off, but by making that move, he said, look, Ty, or look, Austin, I'm here. And if you make one little mistake, I'm going to jump over you and make this pass. Yeah, just 18. Nice just moved. Good. Two of the ball best. Here. Right here, combined for 13 wins at Bristol in the Xfinity Series. Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, but making up no ground on the lead. Looks like uh, Austin Dillon is making up some ground on the lead. He's faster than Jones right now. They got in traffic. He lost a little bit of ground, but he's made it up quickly. Already 20 laps in. Both of the heats earlier, 50 laps each, went green wire to wire. Haven't had an incident so far here at Bristol. Eight cautions in each race here a year ago. 
How about this battle? Brandon Jones, Elliott Sadler, Brendan Gaughan all going at it for position just outside the top 10. And there goes Kyle Busch ahead of Harvick. Made that move work. And now he's going to work over Joey Logano. You get your car sticking down there where Kyle just was, you can make some passes because no one else is running there. Right. It's just really hard to make it work, Michael. Yeah. The, the track has a lot of grip up top. And I know the question is, well, why all the grip up top? Because actually the banking up there has been ground and kind of taken away. But when they ground the track right, in the high lanes, inside, 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 inside. they really gave it some grip. Middle of three. Freshening and pounding Clear high behind the red car if you need. Clear high. The guys that won the two races here a year ago side by side. Kyle Busch got the victory in August. Joey Logano last April moved the 18 up to seventh. Fell back to ninth. Now starting to reel him in is Kyle Busch, winner of four of the last five in 2016. He's got a little bit of clean air right here, a little bit of clean racetrack. We're going to really see what he has for a car here. I'll start watching the lap times, guys. Meanwhile, battle for second. Black and red two of Austin Dillon, one at California. Kyle Larson in that bright green 42 for Chip Ganassi Racing. A few car links behind Eric Jones, who continues to work lap traffic inside of Matt Tift, driving the 24 for JGL. Next week, Tift going to be driving the 18. They'll be teammates next week. Right now, Jones trying to put him a lap down. What's up with our race leader, Vince? He says it's just a little bit tighter than he wants it, especially through the center. Doesn't feel like he can get back to the gas the way he wants. Of course, he's still in the lead, but he knows that with uh, guys like Larson and Austin Dillon, Kyle Busch all lurking back there, that the car's going to have to be better or it's going to get a lot more difficult. And now he's got a new guy behind him, Kyle Larson, able to get around Austin Dillon, and he is right in Eric Jones' hip pocket, lap cars everywhere. Oh, what a bad. You're clear, low, clear. <laughs> I love that. That's classic Bristol. Just working their way through the traffic. And look at these guys. They're battling for position. Kyle Busch has found his mojo. That car is handling well, and he is putting him, picking him up and putting him down. Yeah, the last few laps, watching the lap times, he's about a tenth faster than anyone on the track, and maybe two tenths faster than the cars directly in front of him. So he's definitely got what it takes to get up to the front speed-wise, but does he have enough laps and room on the racetrack? That's a big question. Rhythm is such a big deal for any driver when you come to Bristol Motor Speedway. Kyle Busch appears to have found it. Started fifth, fell to ninth. He's back up to sixth in the running order. It's his teammate, Eric Jones, out front.
back at Bristol under caution for the first time. We'll tell you why in a moment. First to Chris Neville at pit stops. Well, Ty Dillon's been running fourth since the drop of the green, saying the car a little bit tight early in the run, but later in the run starting to loosen up on him. Just going to do a small air pressure adjustment here. Matt? And a four-tire change for Austin Dillon. He was losing his drive off. Air pressure change for the two. The 18 of Kyle Busch, center of your screen, says it's pretty uh, good on the bottom, but it's a little bit snug. Going to make a slight air pressure adjustment. Bottom of your screen, your leader, Eric Jones, said he needs drive off. He just doesn't have the lateral grip that he needs. Can't keep the throttle down, especially off turn four. Going to be four tires and an air pressure adjustment for the 20. And Vince, the number one pit stall, a big deal here at Bristol. Eric Jones comes in leading, exits with the top spot. Kyle Larson holding serve, and the 18 pit crew delivering just like their driver did on track, plus two for Kyle Busch. And here's the reason for the caution. Watch the white 97 of Ryan Ellis. That's um, Jeremy Clemens just gets into the left rear of the 97, and around he goes. That's a, a lot of tight traffic and maybe misjudged it a bit there, did the 51 because. But you can see there were three wide at one point here, Michael, and sometimes maybe you're looking down underneath and you're looking at the two cars, they'd made contact and maybe didn't expect the 97 to, to check up a little bit if he did. Ellis didn't do anything wrong there and he got spun around. But fortunately he didn't hit anything and he can continue to battle. Ryan Priest, the First car one lap down under this, our first caution of the day. I was beginning to think the yellow flag was broke. We, we do have one working here at Bristol and Priest able to get the free pass. So we're 41 laps in for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Coming up next, MLB doubleheader. We start in the American League, Blue Jays and Red Sox. Game one of this weekend series went to the Sox last night. And then tonight, part two of our double dip, Braves and Marlins. In the okay. NL East, the Braves trying to get their second win of the year, but if they're going to do so, they're going to have to shut down this guy, Giancarlo Stanton. He is really good for the Marlins. On fire. And the Blue Jays have had the Sox number at uh, Fenway lately. Until yesterday, they had won 12 of the, or uh, six of the last 12, I think. So. And, and I'm sorry, we, we can't include the Tigers in our doubleheader, Brad. We, we tried to accommodate, just didn't work out this weekend. We've had better days, but <laughs> they're coming back again. I feel the same way about the Atlanta Braves. We're yeah. a little bit, we're struggling now, but maybe yesterday got us on a roll. Looking at the, the pit performance of those drivers running for the $100,000. Eric Jones, the race leader, won the battle off pit road. Suarez is sixth, Ty Dillon seventh, Justin Allgaier ninth. When you talk about those guys eligible for the cash. Uh, we're right at like 10 laps short for making it from here, but everybody's going to save, 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 and these caution laps throughout the race are probably going to get us there, so uh, just save, save, save. Got to keep ourselves in good track position today. Larry, Michael, and I were talking about this. Can you go the distance from here? It sounds like they're thinking about it. No, I, I think you can. The fuel window I was told this morning, Adam, was somewhere around 150 to 160 laps. They pitted with 161 to go. And remember, these cautions are going to save a lot. But to sit here and think we're going to run over 150 laps at Bristol Motor Speedway caution-free, I'm not sure I could buy into that. Yeah, eight cautions here in the two races a year ago. Now, certainly they were 300 laps. Today's main only 200, but I'm with you. I think we'll see this yellow flag a lot more today. Bubba Wallace caught speeding on pit road here. Tough break for him. Yeah, that is a tough break. That'll set him back. Um, it'll be interesting, Brad. We heard Ty Dillon talk about got to have the track position, got to keep the track position. We think they can make it that far as Bubba returns to pit road after that problem. Changed two more tires. They probably took two, tried to get some track position when it didn't sure. work, came back and got the other two. But but, but I, from what I've seen in the heats earlier and early in this race, the times don't fall off that much. These guys could make it all the way to the finish with these Goodyear tires on the car. You think that's their strategy? I think it might be a few driver strategy, but I don't think that'll be the strategy that wins. 160 laps on the tires is still 160. That's a long, <laughs> long ways to go. And we've had 50 lap runs. We've had, you know, a, a 40 lap run here. Uh, and we've seen the tires hold on, but that's a long ways from 160. And a lot of times tires will fall off and kind of step. So I guess we'll have to see how that all comes together. It'll be interesting because the, eight, the 33 of Brandon Jones, he just took two tires. That's how much he wanted that track position. So you've got to figure he's going to come back and get four more later in the going. 
Now more from Ty Dillon and his race team under caution. Uh, they just showed your um, pit road compared to uh, the 20 car. He beat us two seconds, uh, not counting the not count the pit stop time. So maybe he slows you down there. He slowed me down. The 19 coming out slowed me down, and the four on my outside slowed me down. That's that's just a lot of people slowing you down. <laughs> Yeah. And that, that equated to two seconds. Plus, remember, the 20's got that good pit box, too. And this pit road's tough on you drivers. One of the toughest here in Martinsville, slow pit road speed. The cars, uh, the engine doesn't run very smooth, so it, it actually kind of chugs like a train back and forth. Uh, so it's very hard to hold a constant speed, but also very important. You don't want one of these penalties. These guys know it's time to pounce at them. You've got to get to position here on this start. Just about at the one quarter point. Green flag back in the air, completing lap 46 at Bristol. Great start by Jones on the outside. This is really a key part of the race here for Kyle Busch. He's got to get some track position. He's got some help from his pit crew. They gained him three spots on pit road. And now he's got to get this restart and hopefully gain another spot or two to get up there. I think he's the fastest car on the track. In that bottom lane, but making it work right now. Interesting, really. You've got three different lines there. Eric Jones a half a groove higher than Kyle Larson and Kyle Busch doing it down low. Look at Larson. He moves to the middle of the track to take away the angle on exit from Busch, trying to keep that second spot. Wow. Suarez hanging tight. Eric Almirola, good run right behind him. Then it's Joey Logano, but this battle oh, for second Kyle outstanding. And there goes Kyle Busch sliding down. around. All clear, all clear. Good job. Nice save. Yeah. That's a result of Larson running in the middle of the track, taking his groove away, and it just gets Bush loose. Just good hard racing. He needed that little bit of room, didn't have it down there, slid up into Kyle Larson and kind of used his car. Eight tires there and uh -huh. saved it. Eric Almirola going in the wrong direction. Got high coming off a of turn four, hurt his momentum. Was running up near the top five, 15th right now as you go on board. This Wipe of the wall is going to be fresh from Florida. <laughs> right he here in Tennessee. Seventh. He I was know seventh it. when this happened. Now he's 15. And look at all those cars go by. Just a slight slip. Inside. Inside. He tried to use the gas to inside. get it off of the wall. Our gap right here. But, but Brad, you make a mistake like that in, in a 200 lap race and you go immediately behind the eight ball. Yeah, and you thought Bristol was unforgiving. It is. Now make the race even shorter and with not any time to get it back. See where our dash for cash drivers are running, all of them inside the top ten. And Kyle Larson side by side with Kyle Busch. There was contact. Is there damage? I want to check out his left side. I don't think he hit it very hard, but I think they had contact. Yeah, there's a little scuff mark on it. The Goodyear is rubbed off on the left, but everything looks good body-wise. I don't see any smoke. No, everything looks good. Just got the tires. It's really easy when you get contact on the left side to, to get a flat tire. Uh, you got the tailpipes from the car that was underneath you. Those are really sharp, uh, and they can cut down a tire very quickly. So team just wants to make sure it's okay. Been Brendan, an interesting day for Brendan gone. Yeah, struggled in qualifying, got sideways, and and now again, just uh, down on the inside. Oh, of Jeff Burton, and what a save by gone. Four wide off the corner, wow. Almost wasn't over. Elliot Sadler changing lanes on the back straightaway and hit gone again. We've seen some great saves. The save for Kyle Busch, Eric Almirola. Now add Brendan gone to the list. He's 15th driver out of Las Vegas, Nevada. And Brad, you said it, arrow counts no matter where we are. You saw that with Kyle Busch when he got on the inside of Kyle Larson. He just got loose because he didn't have any air to lean on. Larson's car took that away and uh, he couldn't hold on to it. Brandon Jones impressing again. The rookie from Atlanta in the 33 right here in front of Kevin Harvick. Yesterday, Brad in practice ran over 200 laps. Experience not a problem. And uh, he looks good in the race. Another top 10 opportunity for him. When you got a rookie driver, the only way you can get him ready to go is laps. So experience matters, especially at Bristol. But he's getting some experience right now. He's got Kevin Harvick <laughs> being on his rear bumper. That's learning the hard way, right? Look at that slide oh, job. There goes Kyle Larson, able to get around Eric Jones. Eric fighting back on the inside. Kyle Busch is there as well. That was an awesome move by Kyle Larson. That's textbook dirt track slide job. He just went in there and took the groove away. And one thing that I'm watching here, 
is the race is getting faster. The pace is picking up. We're down to running 1560s. We were running 1590s before. That's all because the high lane is starting to, to clean up a little bit, and Kyle Larson is now taking off to the lead. Well, there you have it. I think you, we jinxed him. You know you said not an issue with those 202 laps. Brad said it. He's got an issue now, and so does Kyle Larson. Kyle Busch uses the pick to take Let's the lead. Across the inside, inside. All the way down on the apron. Great wow. racing, middle stages at Bristol. Surprise, surprise, Kyle Busch now leads this race. What a Watching the lap times, Kyle Busch has been, you know, a good tenth and a half to two tenths faster uh, when he gets in, in clean air to these guys. So it was just a matter of time, and he, he was able to get traffic in the right spot, used it perfectly, and when you're that fast, it's hard for people to hold you off, Michael. <laughs> That's exactly right, especially when you're confident as he is. He's moving all over the place, using the high low lane and the low lane. And I said it earlier, lap traffic always a problem here. It was for Eric Jones, who's now third. Cars don't get out of the damn way. We're all good. I know that feeling. Yeah, <laughs> I, might, I might have said that a couple times to my team as well. And, and you know, it's hard to get out of the way here. <laughs> There's nowhere to hide. You're always in constant turmoil and traffic everywhere. If NASCAR Race Up had a radioactive for the Xfinity Series, Eric Jones just would have made the reel. The man that started on point running third. Look at Larson. Larson. A couple of cup superstars, Kyle Busch and Kyle Larson, and Larson not letting him get away. And here goes Jones for second in that outside lane. Look at Kyle Busch. He goes right up and gets in the high lane as soon as he could. That shows you how important it is to be up there. But also you saw when Kyle Larson went to the bottom, the same lane that Kyle Busch was in, he couldn't keep up. And, and that shows one of Kyle Busch's strengths is his car is strong enough to run on the bottom. Of course, it's a little bit slower down there, but it still has really good pace to get by the lap cars. On three different occasions, Kyle Busch, Kyle Larson have finished 1-2 here at Bristol in the Xfinity Series. Every time Kyle Busch has gotten the win and he's out front this afternoon. NASCAR is heading to Richmond. Race Hub is taking the show on the road. Thursday, join us, the King Richard Petty, Eric Almirola, as we broadcast live from Smithfield Foods in Virginia. The fans will be there with a little bacon. Love bacon. We'll see you Thursday at 5. And Larry McReynolds is going to join us in Smithfield, Virginia. And he is the uh, early leader when it comes to the odds makers as far as winning the, uh, the bacon eating contest. <laughs> And now our Fitzgerald Glider's performance report. You look at Joey Logano running sixth. 
His best running position today, fifth. What are they saying about our defending race winner, Matt? The 22 needs more work, Adam. And if you look back to the heat race, Joey was fighting a very tight race car. They made adjustments before the main. Hasn't really helped on that first run. He was on the splitter down in the turn one. Made the car really free on entry. He said the back of the car, it just shook so loose on entry into the corner. They made some adjustments on the stop. Not much improvement. He'd love to win here today. Fitzgerald Glider Kits, a Tennessee company, get involved here at Bristol Motor Speedway, and they have put their colors on a very good race car when it comes to this half-mile facility. Uh, how about Joey Logano? They said, Fitzgerald, we uh, we led every lap last year. I think we'd be a pretty good <laughs> bet here this weekend, and it's, he struggled a bit. You know, the thing hopped out of gear on him in the, in the heat earlier and just hadn't seen the speed from him that we're accustomed to. I think that, you know, obviously I've had the chance to drive the 22 car a few times this year, and that team kind of hit the reset button this year. A, a lot of changeover with personnel and, and so forth with uh, the cup team coming up with Ryan Blaney and, and so many different departures. Uh, so, you know, the team's kind of rebuilding itself, and uh, it's catching on. I feel like it's getting a little bit better, and, and hopefully we'll be back to where it was uh, last year very soon. How about Kyle Larson? He's closing the gap on Kyle Busch. Kyle drove off to about a half a straightaway lead. And uh, whether it's working through traffic or if his car's just going away a bit, Larson's been consistently faster over the last few laps. Well, what I notice is equal laps by themselves. Kyle Larson and Kyle Busch are almost identical. But laps where Kyle Busch gets around traffic and has to go to the bottom, he has way more speed than Kyle Larson. And that's really been the difference maker so far in this race. You can see how much Larson likes that high side. He's really running up top. Matt, we're closing on halfway, and Larson not letting Bush get away here. Back on that pit stop, they shovel the air pressure to try to help that 42 car turn better in the center of the corner. Larson was telling his team it's just way too tight still when he gets to the center, but he also said he changed his approach fence. He's driving it harder on entry into the corner, and it's actually made his car better, and lap times have picked up, Adam. And Matt, aggression not a problem from driver 42. <laughs> he was just saying hello. Yeah, he wanted to make sure the other Kyle knew he was around. Message delivered. What's up with the guy running third, Vince? Well, once he settled down from the frustration of that lap car, Costin in the lead, Chris Gabart, his crew chief, urging Eric Jones to save the tires, telling him these are going to possibly have to last you to the end. We want to make sure we don't burn them off. Keep it under you. So it's going to be tough in this position to be patient if you're Eric Jones. And Brad, they said shuffled the air pressures on the 42 car of Kyle Larson. How much difference as a driver can you feel when you're crew chief? I mean, they're talking about taking maybe a half a pound out of air here, out of a tire here, a pound there. How much difference does that make? Well, you know, I think that depends on who you ask. If you're the driver and your car gets faster, it was everything. If you're the crew chief and you look in the mirror, you say, well, I barely changed a thing. <laughs> so, it, you know, drivers and crew chiefs sometimes have different answers on that one. But right now it's working, so he needs to keep it up. Kyle Busch trying to continue his winning ways. Four of five races he has won in the Xfinity Series. How's his Saturday afternoon drive going here at Bristol? There ain't no way his tires are going to last uh, 110 more doing what he's doing. Yeah, there ain't no way you can do that every lap without blowing a right front out here at some point. Well, there you have it. Hmm. Now, what they're talking about is because Kyle Larson is running so high up on the racetrack, the higher up you run on the racetrack, generally the more tire wear you're going to have because it's a little bit cleaner up there, grinds the tire just a little bit more. The leaders are lapping around Ryan Sieg. Sieg's in the 19th position, so... These guys have marched up to the top 20 and starting to put guys a lap down. And Sieg has done a nice job. This is simply an indication of how good that 18 and 42 are. Mentioned Eric Jones. He leads the way when you talk about the dash for cash. But behind him on track is teammate Daniel Suarez, who also has that red banner. He's gotten around Austin Dillon here. You can see Suarez bobble a bit there, and that opens up the door for Dillon to come back. I'll tell you guys, Daniel Suarez has done such a great job uh, this year and last year. He deserves a lot of credit. He's put himself in position for another great day here today at a, really a very tough racetrack. Yeah, just right out of the gate last year. He comes here and runs second to Logano after Joey's dominance just showed us early in the season. If you can run second at Bristol to a guy like Joey Logano, you know exactly how to get the job done, and he's proven that over and over again. Yeah, no fluke. Came back here in August, another top five, picked up $100,000 on that Friday night when he was eligible for the dash for cash and 
trying to cash in another hundred grand a day. Back at the front, his teammate Kyle Busch just simply cannot get away from Kyle Larson. And look Larson. at that string of traffic ahead of these guys. They're going to be in some serious lap traffic. Now, what Kyle Larson's thinking right here is really simple. Wait till Kyle Busch has to go to the bottom, and hopefully I can get him blocked out on the top. Because Kyle Larson knows he's not as good on the bottom. He just needs a little bit of help from one of these lap cars, and he's just waiting for that opportunity. All uh, right, 18 struggle on exit. I think we're better off to be just a little bit tight. You don't think he's abusing the right front too much, do you? No, I don't think so. We haven't been chopping across very much. Yeah, one and two is great. Same thing. We just need to be a little bit better to center off of three and four. What do you think there, guys? Adjustments. We got We want a, an adjustment, but it sounds like some of these guys are thinking we're going to go all the way on tires. Look at the traffic we're in. I'm yeah, thinking crazy. this mess is going to make wide. a huge difference. Look at the run. Larson's going to get on the bottom. There's three wide in front of him. Oh. This is not going to be pretty. Side by side for the lead. They've gotten around Darrell Wallace Jr. to put him a lap down. He had this three wide for the lead. Bush gets trapped. Here comes Larson for the race lead. Oh, they're, they're rubbing each other. Contact with gone. It's a spotter's nightmare at Thunder Valley. Brendan gone something. Kyle Busch is going to go back underneath him. Three oh, I wide. Think there might have been contact there. There's, There's just not enough room here to make those moves and get away with it every lap. But these guys are doing a great job. They are lapping inside the top 15. The 11 is Blake Cook, currently scored in the 14th position. Just past halfway and problems for Brendan gone. We saw the contact smoke on the left front. Yeah, that's definitely going to cause a tire rub. We'll see if it'll make it okay. I hope it does for Brendan. You don't want to blow a tire out here. I can tell you that. It hurts. He's been frustrated all day. Had a rough qualifying run. His heat didn't go well. He's kind of mad. Now he's been his car up. This is Bristol. The Bristol heats, will make you mad. The heats were tame. I think we're getting paid back right now. This has been an entertaining great laps. But here we got another pack of cars. And Kyle Larson caught that break exactly like, like I was saying. He wanted to be able to find an opportunity to box Kyle in behind lap cars. He got it. Now Kyle Busch is behind him thinking the same thing. Oh, man, that is so tight. Working around Ross Chastain. When this run began, Eric Almirola in that blue 98 was solidly inside the top 10. Now he's about to go a lap down in 13. And he's going to fight him here because he does not want to go a lap down. Absolutely, and he is. And that's going to open the door eventually here for Kyle Busch to make a run on the bottom. You can see Larson loses his momentum. Can't come off that corner like he wanted to and couldn't complete that pass. Darrell Wallace in the free pass position right now. We told you when a lap down, had that speeding penalty on our only cycle of pit stops. He would love to see a caution, get the free pass, have a chance to rally back here in the second half at Bristol. Ooh. <laughs> Look at this three wide in the center of the corner. Blue and yellow 19 of Daniel Suarez outside of the black and red two of Austin Dillon. They're racing for fourth. Suarez is hanging tough on the high side. Kyle Larson just pulled an epic slide job on the 18 and the six cars in the wall down the back stretch. Stay green. It's got a flat tire. It looks like we've heard concerns about right front tires. Yeah, All right, bring it this time if it's down. Been 70 laps since these drivers made a pit stop. You can see there, he was in the groove, got on the gas, the car just moved up to the right, flat tire there for Bubba Wallace. That's only 70 laps. We still have 80-some to go here, guys. Uh, we might not have seen the last of those. Look at Elliot Sadler. Bubba Otis. Wallace comes down, getting his issues taken care of. Got to report the 11 of Blake Cook. Had a power steering issue. That's not good at Bristol. Look at Elliot Sadler in amongst these leaders. He was trying to hold off. Kyle Larson couldn't do it. Now Bush gets by on the high side as well. There's so much action on the track right now. We can't even cover it all. We got great battles for fourth, great battle for the lead here. Every lap trading back and forth, three wide, all trying to get by lap cars, lap traffic. And, you know, th these guys were talking about going the distance on fuel. Then we start hearing about some tire issues. I, I think right now they're in a position where you would definitely pit if the caution comes out for this reason. Only 11 cars on the lead lap right now, Michael. That's the fact, Adam, and that's what you'll see these leaders do if that caution flag flies. And when I say if, I might say when, because like Brad said, there's side by side and action all over this place. That move right there, guys, that's the move that Kyle Larson does so well. His dirt experience just gives him that 
expertise to pull off that perfect slide job. Part of why he's so great here at Bristol. Jeb Burton a lap down, 10 cars on the lead lap. They're fighting here at Bristol, and they'll be <laughs> fighting even harder tomorrow night. UFC fight night, uh, tonight rather, on Fox, 6 p.m. Eastern time. Rashad Evans and Glover Teixeira tonight, 6 Eastern, on your local Fox station. What do you see, Larry? 118 of 200. Well, speaking of fighting, Ty Dillon talked about fighting for track position, but I think the key is exactly what you said, Adam, that we're down to only 10 drivers on the lead lap. I think if we get a caution, absolutely you come and get four tires. But remember, that would be your last set of Goodyear stickers. These teams only had four sets of sticker Goodyear tires for the heat and the main. Yeah, ran one set in the heat, started this race in the main, and they've changed one set. As you said, only one set remaining. Kyle Larson in front of Kyle Busch, 81 to go at Bristol. Seventy five laps to go at Bristol for the NASCAR Xfinity Series and our second caution of the day for Derek Cope who had a problem off the of turn two. You can see three wide into the corner will work if you give a little bit of room but uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't think Derek quite knew that he was three wide. He might have, must have thought he was too wide there Michael. And there was a rush of cars coming off turn two behind him that got all wadded up. They all somehow made it through but uh, it was close. Look at that mess. Brandon Jones had just gone a lap down. He gets the free pass here. Leaders on pit road. Chris Neville, you're first. And Ty Dillon, pretty happy with his race car. Thinks he has the strongest car on the bottom of the racetrack. Going to make a small air pressure adjustment here, saying the car just a little bit tight getting off the corner. Matt? Austin Dillon pitting in the last stall on the back stretch. Said he just needs more help. Now, he's got great forward drive off, but he needs to focus more on the center turn to help him get him through the corner. Now moving around to the front stretch, the very first stall is Kyle Larson. He said his car started out a little bit on the tight side, but really came in. Vince. The 18 of Kyle Busch. Kyle said it started off a little on the free side, but it just got so tight he couldn't turn. So they got to make the turn last. And Eric Jones says he just doesn't have any drive. Got to have more drive if he's to get to the front. Vince, the pit crews doing their job. Kyle Larson, Kyle Busch came in one, two. That's how they exit. Eric Jones holding serve, as does Daniel Suarez in the 19. Austin Dillon in the two. They are your top five. Second caution of the day for Derek Cope. 73 laps remaining in our 200 lap main. We're live in Bristol, Tennessee on FS1.
I just like to say breathe. 70 laps to go at Bristol. Kyle Larson leads. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Superior performing tires to face challenging conditions on the track and the road. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. Mention Larson out front, Kyle Busch, Eric Jones, Daniel Suarez, Austin Dillon, the top five. Brad, we always appreciate you coming up here, being with us. We want to give back to your foundation in return. What do you guys have going on right now? Uh, we have great projects going on with the uh, Checker Flag Foundation. Right now, our main cause is the careers for veterans, looking to get veterans uh, uh, placed in the workforce when they come home from the battlefield. Great thing that we love, but, but we also got a couple really neat projects we're about to announce, so stay tuned. It's going to be fun, to much Brad, like this restart. <laughs> Bradracing.com slash foundation for more information. Outside lane, Kyle Larson, he gets away as the green flag goes back in the air. Great jump for Kyle Larson. That's a key, key move. If you're going to beat Kyle Busch, you got to beat him on the restarts. And in the dash for cash, you got three guys right there together. Suarez, Jones, and Ty Dillon. Great stop by the Suarez team and a good job by Daniel on that restart. We've seen him have a lot of speed, Brad, but lose some spots on restarts. He was ready that time, and he gained. Well, well, Jones actually beat him coming off the pit lane, but because Suarez was fourth, had that outside lane, that's huge. And now the battle for the lead. Bush looking inside of Larson. Early in the run, Kyle Busch's car is very strong on the bottom of the racetrack, especially in one and two. I would look for him to get down in three and four. Now, remember, he got loose down here before when Kyle gets close to him. Look at Larson go way up the hill. I think he knew that Bush got loose down there. And they said, maybe I'll just give him a little more room this time. He needs Michael. some space. I think he's getting serious now. Probably driving harder than he has all day long. Heard some interesting radio communication from Kyle Bush about Larson's car. Listen to what Kyle had to say. For some reason, like I was even taking care of it on the front side of the run, but then it just went away when, when Larson got to me and then passed me. And he is driving the shit of his and his is staying. I don't get it. <laughs> you ever done well, that, Brad? Go. <laughs> Every time I'm not leading, that's exactly what I say. <laughs> that's, you know, you're, you're trying to figure out and make sense of it. And, you know, Kyle Larson just does a, such a great job of running up against the wall. And you know, there's a lot of reasons why that works, uh, you know, whether it be aero or taking care of the tires. And it's working right now for Kyle Larson. See what a red banner this? on the windshield there, Michael? Yeah. $100,000 on the line? There's three of them in a row that are going for that $100,000, and they are all over one another. And Eric Jones, unfortunately, third in that group. The top has got, like, all this rubber buildup in the grind, and it makes it really tough to run up there. That's why Larson, like you said, was all the way up there in the white. It's above that. Larson Something. will Larson will definitely go places no one else goes. Brad, yeah, make it work. That's the impressive thing. It, it, it's not enough to just go up there, but he does it and he's fast. It's really, you know, really impressive. You you likened it to some of his dirt racing experience, where they have to just search around and find grip on a dirt track. You can't just run the bottom. Logano got a piece of the wall coming off a of turn two. He's back in the ninth position. Eric Jones trying to pick up a spot. Oh, he came up right in front of Austin oh. Dillon, and Austin's going to return the favor a little bit here. Oh, wow. That just shows you the struggle to pass here at Bristol, how tough it is. Used to, you'd have to fight for every inch down on the bottom, run into a guy if you wanted to pass him. Now you got to do the same thing up top, it seems like. Let's go back and look at Joey Logano and what happened as the defending race winner came off our second corner. Got just a little bit high. Looks like he got in that the grime that we were talking about, and it sucked him into the wall. Not too hard, but not what you want to do to your race car either Run, way. Running back in the ninth position, and these two have just continued to battle. Remember at Texas how fast Kyle Larson was on the short run, and then his car would fade back? Now we're here at Bristol, and it looks like maybe car, Kyle's got a better, Kyle Larson has a better long run car, and that could pay off here at Bristol. Let's go back to when the caution came out. Had nine cars on the lead lap. Brandon Jones got the free pass. First car one lap down. Two drivers took the wave around. There are now 12 cars on the lead lap. Eric Almarola, Ryan Reed, they last pitted at 140. Their tires are almost 90 laps older than the other guys on the lead lap. But if they get a caution, that would be a great gamble for those crew chiefs. Yeah, I think it's a brilliant move, Adam, because there's a good chance it's Bristol that we're going to get another caution. And even if it doesn't work, What's the worst that can happen? They'll fall another lap down, uh, but they took a shot at it. So really smart play by their crew chiefs. Yeah, and the last time by, Amarola ran a 16.20. That's about three tenths off of what our leaders have, are running right now. So his pace is off, but he's in the top 10 with a chance to make something out of it. 
getting close to the fourth quarter of Ooh, our Kyle 200 Larson. lap main. Look Kyle, at this. Kyle Larson just slipped a little bit in three and four. Kyle Busch is going to try to take advantage of it. He's got that lap car in front of him. Let's see if he tries to use it as a pick. And this is where Kyle Larson was able to get the lead on that last run using lap traffic, but Larson chops Kyle Busch off and maintains the top spot. How many slide jobs do you think Kyle Larson's <laughs> done in his lifetime? And there's another one on the list, but he has got that perfected, working it to an art. For his age, he looks like he's a, a, a veteran <laughs> when it comes to slide jobs, I'll tell you that. What an entertaining afternoon for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Still 50 laps to go, 500 laps tomorrow for NASCAR's top shelf. It's NASCAR on Fox, 1230 Eastern Time. We're live at Fox Sports Go. Yeah, and 50 laps equates to about 15 minutes, so don't go anywhere. If you're at home, <laughs> sit there and watch this exciting finish. These two aren't done yet. A lot of lap traffic flies ahead. It's like a game of Frogger with the lap cars here. You I see think they the just, same they thing. They jump them and they jump them back and forth. And, the, the driver that's behind is just looking for a mistake. Any little mistake, a lap car that uh, maybe they catch wrong or doesn't give them a break, and that's all it's going to take for the lead to switch. I think Bush has made his car better um, after that pit stop and those adjustments because he's really faster than Kyle Larson right now. Fourth, fifth, and sixth. Ty Dillon, Eric Jones, Austin Dillon. Yeah. Front row seat for Kevin Harvick. Listen to him work that gas. Lap traffic again is. for the leaders. Kyle Busch taking a peek. Oh, oh they right make contact. contact. Garrett Smithley in that red zero hit Larson in the right, right rear. Again. This is exactly the opportunity Kyle Busch is looking for. And look at Larson just close the door on Busch. He Is said, I've got to get inside of that 24, and I'm coming over, bud. Larson's been fearless today in that lap track. He has. He refuses to be beat. That car's beat all to pieces. I got to see this again. Look at this job Larson does. There's not a hole there, is there? If you make one, there is. Wow. <laughs> but, and, and keep in mind the guy they were going around there, the 24 of Matt Tift, he's going to drive the 18 next week. I thought maybe Kyle Busch would get an assist from him in that situation. Uh, you know, drivers have some short memories sometimes. <laughs> Daniel Suarez right now in line to get the $100,000 bonus, but he just about threw it out the window. Look at this. Whoa, all the way off the track. Could something he happened to his right front there? Yeah, think? absolutely. Something happened to the 16 and he checked up. Luckily, Suarez was able to hold third. I'm not even sure how. Yeah, and he's just got a small advantage over Ty Dillon and Eric Jones. They're in fourth and fifth. Suarez ran about an 18 second lap with that contact, so he gave much of his gap away. This will be the third straight time Suarez has won the 100,000. Mentioned he got it last August here at Bristol, also won it at Darlington. Ty Dillon is getting ready to heat him up, just like Kyle Busch is all over Kyle Larson. We're down to 40 laps to go here, guys. And Larson is just doing an incredible job here, guys. He's so skilled and so talented at this this type of racing right here. I don't think he has as fast a car as Kyle does, but he just, like I said, he refuses to be beat. Ty Dillon hanging in there, fourth right now, Chris. Well, he is. He's trying to get a little bit of distance between he and Eric Jones, still telling the team the car a little bit tight on exit, so doing whatever he can, trying to get some laps down, because on the long run, the car finally starts to loosen up, but it hasn't yet. Kevin Harvick lurking right behind this group. Here's Kyle Busch again inside of Kyle Larson. He gave him a big shot into turn three. Now he's going to try to pull the slide job and one of two. I'll tell you, if these wow. two don't wreck each other before it's <laughs> over, it's going to be a miracle. <laughs> this is as good as it gets. A couple of the best in the Xfinity series. Larson said he's got a flat. Is that what you interpreted there? That's what I heard him say. 37 laps to go. If they keep racing like this. Oh. And Eric Jones. Jones picks up a spot using that high lane. It's time to go. Yeah, you wouldn't think there was 30-some laps to go. You'd think there's one lap to go. 
Wow, look at that. These guys full are racing I told you, full contact racing. They're going to fight tonight on FS1, and they're fighting right here at Bristol. So Jones now behind his teammate, Daniel Suarez. Both of those drivers eligible for the 100,000. It's whoever finishes best of that group, Ty Dillon also in the mix. For the second, and I say the second, not the minute, things have tamed down at the front, Larry. Yeah, I mean, watching these guys, remember, you think about Eric Jones, think about Ty Dillon. It's drivers racing for a championship. They're not even thinking about that. They're thinking about $100,000 over the next 33 laps, which is what Daniel Suarez has running third right now. Yeah, but Larry, Eric Jones has cleared Ty Dillon, and he is fast. He's moved that 20 car up high, higher in the turns than I've even seen Kyle Larson go. Last time by, he cut a tenth of a second off the advantage that Suarez has. So company's coming, and it's in the form of that 20 car. Look at those moves he's making. Very aggressive here late in the going. 31 laps remain. Kyle Larson leads. Kyle Busch is second. Third is Daniel Suarez, the top runner. When you look at drivers involved in our dash for cash, and Michael talked about the fact that Eric Jones is fourth and closing in on his teammate. Eric Jones also in line for that $100,000. That'll be interesting to see how those teammates treat each other when they get to get to battling for that $100,000. No doubt Eric Jones has pushed the go button. You told me you got to focus at this place. There's 100,000 reasons in front of you to do it. Let's get it. You got that right, and he's doing his job. He's got that car right on the edge. I like the cheerleading. Sometimes you hate it as a driver when you get cheerleaded, but Bristol is one of those tracks where you've got that sight in front of you. You need it here. This is a good place for it. Think about all the problems Eric Jones has had this year, the penalties, a lot of adversity to battle through for this race team. If he get up past Daniel Suarez, get a, get a top three, he could put himself in position not only uh, for the $100,000, but be halfway home to making the chase. Two of these Dash for Cash awards gives you a spot in the playoffs. This race up front is intense. Larson is, I mean, uh, Brad, every corner you risk the lead with how you attack the lap traffic. Ooh, and he's got two cars in front of him side by side. And he's going to have exactly to run the bottom. Want. That's going to give Kyle Busch a lot of momentum from behind. Eric Almirola, last car on the lead lap. Told you he didn't pit that last time. Took the wave around on much older tires. And it's going to hold up Kyle Larson and bring Kyle Busch right back to his rear bumper. There goes the slide job. Ooh, but he wasn't quite far enough ahead. 18's going to have a big run here. Big momentum for Kyle Busch. 24 to go as they cross the start finish line. These guys sure do know how to make it fun to watch, don't they? When you think of the Xfinity Series, Kyle Busch's record is second to none. When you think about a track where you, a guy that has to run right out next to the wall, you would pick Kyle Larson to be on your team. We've got the best of the best at the front. He's not going away, Vince. He certainly is not. Crew Chief Chris Gale told me, look at Kyle trying to push it inside of Kyle Larson. Can't quite make the move. But Ky uh, Chris Gale, the crew chief for Kyle Busch, said when you look at Kyle's record in the Xfinity Series and you look at what he has done here at Bristol, there's no other option or expectation other than to win. So they definitely felt the pressure on the box today, and his driver's giving him everything he can to add to that total. 21 remaining here. Vince, and you know Kyle Larson is hungry, and the reason he's hungry is because three times he's finished second here to Kyle Busch. He would love to get the checkered flag here today. Bush looking inside again. Eric the 98 is really holding him up. Michael. Eric Amaro is making life tough on Kyle Larson. He's in his groove, but yet Larson isn't fast enough to move around him. And Kyle Busch's car is better on the bottom. Might open up that opportunity. Got the third. Oh, he's going to try too. to thread the needle. And nice he does. Move. What a move by Kyle Larson. Wow, this is great racing, guys. Eric Almirola goes a lap down. He just to go. can't explain how hard it is to do what Kyle Larson is doing. He's got a car behind him that's faster. He knows it. He has to make every move perfect. Kyle Busch is beating on the rear bumper. You've got lap tracking all over the track. Oh, and you're at Bristol. Yeah. Pulling two Gs in 15 seconds. I and mean, he's fighting hard. Physically, it's so demanding. But then you have to multiply all the decisions he's having to make in such a short period of time every lap, dealing with traffic, running right out next to the wall, knowing that if you get just a little bit too high, you're going to go into the wall, splitting traffic. He's doing it all. 16 laps to go. 
That's like four minutes by my math, but that's going to be really, really stressful. <laughs> you know, when you talk about running around here and holding your breath, I think I might have to start holding my breath through these last 10, 15 laps. This is amazing racing. Mm. Daniel Suarez hanging on to that third position in the Dash for Cash award, but it's not been easy for him in lap traffic. It's a big group of lap traffic in front of Kyle Larson, and with just 15 laps to go, they're going to catch him. That's going to decide the race here, guys. He's managed it perfect all day long. We'll see if it can continue, because right now the trophy is on the line. Larson dives to the bottom off turn four. Nice run off there to make his way around Ryan Ellis in the 97. Got a contact, yes. A couple of cars oh, got together off two. Back straight away. That's Mario Goslin, the 90. Wow. Third caution of the afternoon. It comes out up, with 13 up. laps to go. Now, how many of them are going to pit, Brad? I don't know. I'm trying to decide if Kyle Larson wanted to see this yellow or not. the best he can here. We're staying out. There's there's the leader, Kyle Larson. We know he's staying. I figured the top five or six will stay out, but some of these guys will come and get some tires, I think. Well, and only nine on the lead lap here. Free pass going to go to Eric Almirola. Does Kyle Busch come and get tires? We saw tire decisions at Texas in the Sprint Cup race play a big factor in who won that race. What will happen here at Bristol? Hey, some stress for those guys going for the cash, too, Michael. Right now, Suarez, Eric Jones, Ty Dillon, uh, third, fourth, and fifth. Do they what even do, have any tires? What are you thinking, crew chief? Guys, they don't have any new tires. The best set of tires they have has 37 laps on them. So you're not coming to pit road because we're going to be much, we're going to be down to around probably five or six laps to go. There's a lot of crew chiefs that are breathing a deep sigh of relief, Larry, that they don't have to worry about that. They could put on the scuff tires that are fresher than these on the car, but I don't, none of the leaders will come do that. It's kind of nice, Larry, isn't it? Get a caution with 12 to go, battling for the lead, and be stress-free on the box as far as decision-making. Yeah, pretty much what you tell your driver. It's been the theme of the day. Brendan Gaughan said it in qualifying. Go like hell, man. You got what you got. <laughs> and and Daniel Suarez, Larry, has, has, has pulled a tough straw. He's going to restart in third position down on the bottom. That means that Eric Jones is going to be up on the outside. This is a battle for 100 grand. Give the advantage to Jones, even though he's behind Suarez. Let's hear from our leader. Yeah, there's uh, tires about got about the same laps that we have sitting in here. So uh, I say we're good to go. You got a better car. You're the man. There you go. There's that cheerleading you wanted, Brad. You're the man. Now He's you got a little breather, guy, too. The one guy that could pit here, Eric Almirola, got the free pass. He's on the lead lap. And remember, they had taken the wave around, so they will have a set of tires. Perhaps Eric Almirola could be a spoiler late. Larson leads 10 to go at Bristol. Boys, we're crushing.
Right now it's NASCAR next MLB, a doubleheader beginning in the AL East. Red Sox looking for their second in a row over the Blue Jays. That comes your way next. Then tonight, Braves and Marlins. Braves looking for their second win of the year. Uh, Dale Jr. watching as a proud <laughs> car owner. He approves of your abilities in the booth, Brad. Well, thank you, Dale Jr. It's, this is not a normal race. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, this is an excellent race. And there's... There's nobody out there doing normal things. I mean, running this fast on a little track like this side beside the battle we've seen at the front, man, I, I know how much Dale Jr. appreciates great racing, and this is great racing. And, and this is an open invite. Dale, if you'd like to join us, you're welcome anytime, right? <laughs> yeah, come on up, buddy. We'd love to have you. <laughs> Sorry, Dale, that wasn't my idea. You just got called out. But we love you, Dale. <laughs> All right, short track racing here, short track racing week next week in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Rises to grasp a win where so many champions have before, to leave a lasting impression and light a fire in the competitors' eyes. See who will stake their claim at America's premier short track, Saturday at noon Eastern on FS1. We'll see you at noon Eastern at Richmond. Dash for cash on the line again, and, and you'll be in the race. I'll be in the race, Your yes. teammate's going to be with us, Joey Logano. In Roll the reversal here. Yeah. Hopefully it goes a little bit better for me than it's going for him right now. They're, uh, <laughs> they're hanging in, but uh, he, I know they want to win. He pitted and got those tires, so uh, could be interesting to see if Joey can make any moves. And they're not fresh tires. They're, they're scuffs, like 40-lap scuffs that they ran to open the race. They're cool, and they've got some laps on them, and they decided it was a way to try to gain some spots. But this dash for cash battle between Suarez, Eric Jones, and Ty Dillon, they're stocked up three, four, and five, and they know what's on the line. Yeah, we've got a big race here, not just for the lead, and I think it's going to be really exciting between the two Kyles because Kyle Busch has been faster on the short run, Kyle Larson on the long run, and guess what? We have a five-lap run to the green, but then also, like you said, this dash for cash battle on the second row, knowing that Eric Jones has a little bit of an advantage with his restart position, we'll see if Daniel Suarez can fight him back. Uh, Suarez hasn't been great on restarts this year. We're going to go another lap before we go back. This is a chance to put all those challenging restarts behind him, make the perfect one here and grab $100,000 because of it. Now going to be uh, four laps to go. I, are you guys nervous a little yes, bit? Yes, yes. Thank you for asking. I, my hands are sweating. <laughs> Mine too. I beat poor Brad to death, showing him things that are going on around the track. <laughs> I know my elbow's a little sore over here. I'm nervous, and I promise I'm not going to win $100,000 today. This is just exactly what you hope for when you come to a short track NASCAR style. Oh, man, we got a car on the backstretch stall. That's Jeremy Clements in the 51. We're getting down here to where this is going to be. Could go overtime A few here. laps to go, yeah, and maybe overtime. The Really, the key is going to be, can Kyle Busch keep up with Kyle Larson in the launch zone, that restart box? If he can do that, I think he has enough speed to, to make a challenge and probably get the win and make the pass. That's going to be the big part of the race right here, this restart box coming off of turn four when we do go green. Keep this in mind. The only series this year that has not tried out the new overtime rule, the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Well, I'm, I'm nervous, and, and I'm thinking that that could be uh, still a, a part of the equation here to get to victory lane. These restarts, we know how hard it is to pass. They're going to be really leaning on one another. They got Jeremy Clements pushed out of the way. Lights are out on the pace car. Green next time around. Three laps to go to decide it here at Bristol. This is the time when you've got to nail your restart if you're Kyle Larson because Kyle Busch has a fast call on the bottom. If he's able to be door to door with Kyle but Larson when they go in the corner could give the advantage to Busch. Larson outside, Busch inside, here we go. Oh, Kyle what a Bush. great start for Kyle Larson. Eric Jones trying to get there. Crossover move for the lead. Huge restart for Eric Jones. He's trying to win that $100,000. Look at the speed he's got. Here he he's comes, get outside him. lane. Eric Jones led that lap, two to go. Oh, and they're going to make contact off of turn Larson two. Larson ran him high, and here comes Kyle Busch. Three car battle for the lead as we come back to the white flag. Larson's slowing, something's wrong. Clear. Eric Jones Clear. has the top spot. One lap to go, brought to you by Credit One Bank. Eric Jones trying to win the race in $100,000.
Look Here's at Kyle Busch inside. Can he make it stick? No, Eric Jones, checkered flag. Big play day. He wins it. What yeah. a finish. That restart spot was huge. Eric Jones. Eric Jones. You beat the best, baby. You beat the best at Bristol. You hear me? You beat the best. How I'm about so that? proud of you. I can't see straight. Park on top of that building, babe. Woo. I'm so proud of him, too, and I don't really have anything to do with it. But what a move the kid made to get the lead from Kyle Larson. I don't think Kyle thought he had the speed to get up on the outside of him, and he did it. The yeah, key is he had a great launch in the restart zone, was able to keep up with Kyle Larson through one and two, and then kind of snooker him on the outside in three and four, just like you're talking about. Great job, Eric Jones. Be interesting to see what Kyle Larson says about this great move. Not only the start, look at Larson. He gets a great start as well. But look at the momentum Jones has. He's right on the back of Larson. He goes to the bottom. But then the move was down in three and four. Do you think he surprised Larson here? The 42 has just had a little bit of a slip right there. And, you know, he hadn't had the short run speed, Michael, all race long. And at the key moment in the race, it stuck up. <laughs> Look at the job Jones does there. It looked like Larson was going to run him into the wall, and he just kept his foot on the floorboard and pulled through it. Larson didn't give it to him. You can say that. Yeah, what a, what a restart by both Kyle Larson and Eric Jones. Talk about doing it in style. Eric Jones gets the dash for cash, $100,000. First time he's been able to collect that money, and he gets his third career victory in his 33rd start. And he beat he beat Kyle Larson and Kyle Busch in, in doing so, and that that in itself is a major accomplishment. It's got to make that young man so proud and happy to be a part of uh, Joe Gibbs Racing and driving those uh, Toyotas for him. Kyle Busch, a runner-up, one-two finish for Joe Gibbs, and here you see Busch. Well, nobody likes to run second when you got a fast car. I'm not sure exactly what he's uh, upset about, you know, with specifics, but they still had a really good day. The Gibbs cars, again, have proven the amazing speed they have in the Xfinity Series, and Eric Jones just got it done. What's going on, Matt? Fans would call it exciting racing, but Kyle Busch, how would you describe uh, especially the restarts there near the end? Restarts for us were horrible today. Uh, when I'd go to the gas both times, the car just shut off and wouldn't go. Uh, just stumbled, you know, just too much throttle too soon. I don't know what, but um, it's frustrating when you're in position, you have a chance, and uh, you just throw it away. Obviously, Jones was in a really good position there, but uh, great job to those guys, and he deserves a win, but, um, you know, the class of the field, the two cars that were the class of the field, they didn't win today, so, um, oh well. Chris? Kyle Larson led 95 laps today, and Carl, so what a great race between you and Kyle Busch all day long, but talk us through that final restart and those last couple laps. Yeah, it definitely was fun racing Kyle. Uh, he was you know, a little bit better than I was, but uh, it's hard to pass. I had fun in traffic. Uh, didn't really want to see that caution. Knew I was tied on short runs and just did a really bad job on that restart. It's a really, really bad job. I uh, hate, it, hate it for my guys. You know, I want to win here really bad and uh, felt like I, well, I, I know I gave that one away. So, hate it. Uh, we always have speed here when we come, so it's yeah, I've been in top three so many times here and uh, just have yet to get a win. So um, really disappointed in myself. Uh, hurts to uh, lose one like that, um, but learn, learn quite a bit for tomorrow and hopefully our cup car is good there. Thanks, Kyle. What a day for Eric Jones. Won the pole, led all 50 laps in his heat, and a late rally. Gets him his third career victory in the main. Brad, what do you think Eric Jones thought when he got to turn three and saw there was a lane there for him to drive around the outside? Merry Christmas. <laughs> I guarantee he never saw that one coming. He didn't know how he was going to win that race. But just getting that open run on the outside was something I know he didn't see coming. Yeah, it was a great move. And something, you know, I think Kyle Larson's car just did not have the short run speed. And, and he did an excellent job 
uh, almost the entire race, and it just didn't pan out for him there at the end. And that interview is why I love Kyle Larson. Just honest and straightforward, said that one's on me. I hate it for my guys. The, the guys that race these cars, uh, they're just so gracious and so appreciative of the opportunity, and uh, that was a great example of that. I'll, I'll give Kyle a lot of credit, Kyle Larson. He, he's eating some humble pie right there, but these Gibbs cars have been the class of the field all year long, and, and they showed it again here today with that move. That was a power move by Eric Jones. Austin Dillon, good all day as well. Finished fourth, Matt. Strong top five finish for Austin Dillon and the two teams. So when you break this one down with you, sit down with your team, what's going to stand out most? Um, you know, we, we're a little too tight, I think. Um, I was good for that heat race, and the rubber hadn't completely laid down. And when we got really rubbered up, the Reem Chevy just got a little too tight. But, you know, proud of my guys. Wish I would have done some things in that last run to put ourselves in a different position. Um, kind of got moved around a little bit there, but... We'll, uh, we'll take it. You know, it was a good gain. We got some new stuff coming to Richmond, and I'm excited about that. Good luck in Richmond. Adam? Thank you, Matt. You know, when 2016 began, we said that Eric Jones was the favorite to win the NASCAR Xfinity Series Championship. First driver to clinch a spot in the chase with his victory here today, and what a thriller it was. You know, he had a rough Daytona, but what, what I love about this kid, we knew that this chase format was going to play right into his hands. As the early part of the season rolls through, he gets laps under his belt, understanding more and more about his cars and his challenges, and now to get a victory this early in the season, he's going to be tough in the chase. And both he and Daniel Suarez are off to a great start. Daniel Suarez, I think, could have had the same opportunity if he had lined up fourth on the restart. That restart positioning is so, so important. Eric Jones got the opportunity and made the most of it when it counts. And that's what winners do. And think about who he was racing against. I mean, two of the best, not, not just in NASCAR, but here at Bristol, Kyle Busch and Kyle Larson. And Austin Dillon right in there charging sure. with him. And he beat the best today. And he's just been so impressive with every move he's made since he came to NASCAR. And this win at Bristol will probably go up there as one of his favorite ever. Let's go to Chris Neville. And Justin Olgar coming home fifth today. Justin, you've been in the top ten every race since Daytona. Your thoughts on the day? Well, it was a great day. We had a great Hellman Chevy. Uh, felt like there at the end, obviously, the caution helped us out. We picked up quite a few spots. But uh, to be part of the Dash for Cash, Xfinity Dash for Cash program, huge thanks to them for putting this on this week. And thought we had a shot at it at one point, maybe, and just needed a little bit of help. But I can't thank uh, everybody back at the shop enough and Hendrick Engines, all of our all of our partners and the fans. I mean, we had a great day today. It was fun. I hope uh, Bristol didn't disappoint because it was definitely fun behind the wheel. Thanks, Justin. Danielle? All right, guys, only 19 years old and one of the biggest days in Eric Jones' career. Inside the Hollywood Hotel for a recap, Larry McReynolds, your thoughts? Well, the fact we were promoting if you win two dash for cash, you become chase eligible. Eric Jones doesn't have to worry about that. He won the race and the dash for cash. He is now the first Xfinity Series regular to win a race in 2016. And that's why I say this is such a momentous day for Eric Jones. Wins $100,000, wins the race, and locks himself into the chase. Let's go down to Vince in victory lane. $100,000 as the dash for cash winner and his third career victory, and maybe more importantly, the two guys he had to beat to get the win. Kyle Busch said the two cars that were the class of the field didn't win. Kyle Larson said he gave it away. How did you steal this one today? Uh, I don't know, I, we got a really good restart there. You know, the 18 hadn't been getting going. I, I lost my voice, I've been screaming so much on the, on the cool down lap, but <clears throat> we got a really good restart, and Kyle just left the top open, and. And we went up there, and uh, he worked pretty hard to keep us behind us. But uh, we we just kept digging, and it worked out. And just an awesome day. I never thought uh, <clears throat> I never thought we'd get our first win here at Bristol of the year. But couldn't be happier to get this GameStop Camry in victory lane. Cool to do it with Afterglow and everybody. But thank you to Chris Gabehart, his whole team. It's a uh, it's a really young team, <clears throat> but we're getting better every week. And uh, it's it's cool to see it pay off here in victory lane. The win gives you a spot in the chase, guaranteed but also what's it mean to you to beat Kyle Larson and Kyle Busch to get the victory at Bristol? <laughs> well, I figured it, at some point in the year we could get a win uh, when those guys weren't in the field, but I knew it would be a tall task to do it with them in the field. And to do it at Bristol, those two guys, you know, that's one of their best tracks, I would say. But just uh, I'm just so excited. You can tell I'm out of breath. I wasn't working that hard, but just uh, just so excited about the win. And, and to be here in victory lane and beat those guys to do it is a, uh, a really big day for us. You deserve to be excited. Well done. Eric Jones wins at Bristol. 
Vince, today the student beat the teacher. Eric Jones leading 62 laps, but more importantly, he led the last two, Larry. Well, and, and I like the fact that all four of our Dash for Cash eligible drivers, they finished in the top seven, going down there to Ty Dillon in the three. 10 cars finishing on the lead lap. Here we start to see some cars a lap down. Elliot Sadler finished yeah. 15th, his first finish outside the top 10 in 2016. And Bristol's such a great track for Elliot. He didn't have the car he wanted entering the race. And Darrell Wallace Jr., 25th, didn't feel good this weekend, had a flat tire under green, and then also busted for speeding. I'm sure he's glad this weekend's over. A fun day of racing on FS1. The action, though, far from over on the network. Today, it's an MLB on FS1 doubleheader as the defending AL East champion Blue Jays take on David Ortiz and the Red Sox. Then, an NL East battle between the Braves and Marlins. You can see it all start in just moments right here on FS1, 3.30 Eastern Time. And you can also see it on Fox Sports Go. My Braves are on a roll just like Eric Jones. They won a ball game yesterday. They beat the Marlins. See, you have just enough time to get back to the motor coach lot here at Bristol. Enjoy an adult beverage, perhaps. You've worked hard today and watched some good baseball on FS1. Well, but we just watched some great racing. I <laughs> mean, did. the battle that Kyle Busch and Kyle Larson just had, and then Eric Jones, we saw him coming up through there before that last caution. We knew he had a fast race car. He got the caution, and he capitalized on it. Four times in Xfinity Series history. Now, we've seen the Kyle Busch, Kyle Larson game finishing 1-2, and all four times Kyle Busch has beat Kyle Larson down the stretch. He said he just didn't have it on restart said Bush and Larson held on Eric Jones truly can say he beat the best today well and you think about it he also beat Austin Dillon I think that's what Michael Waltrip said that's two past champions of the Xfinity series but the other thing that happened with Eric Jones today it's only about the second race of the year where he didn't have any type of an issue any type of a Good penalty point. speeding on pit road jumping the start of the race it was uneventful and that I think that also paid a little bit of a, of a contribute to him going to victory lane next week the series look at that sticker there you put go that sticker on the car that's <laughs> the first time we've seen that sticker this year an xfinity series regular had yet to win so far this season an excellent point eric jones the first one to do it larry i was going to say now we head to richmond next weekend another short track another dash for cash and some more beating and banging, I would say. Absolutely. And Joey Logano, who was in the race today, you can tell how excited I was throughout the race here at Bristol. I'm losing my voice. Uh, Brad, who will be will be racing next week, he was in the booth. He's going to swap with his cup teammate. Joey Logano going to be in the booth with us next weekend. So then Joey Logano can critique Brad Keselowski what he does <laughs> on the racetrack. We know Eric Jones uh, has $100,000 more in his pocket than he did to start the day. Larry, what will he spend it on? Oh, I don't know. He <laughs> seems to be pretty conservative, so I'd say he'll just put some of it in the bank. Such a good problem to have and such a good show today at Bristol. We'll see you back here tomorrow for the cup race right now. The MLB pregame show on FS1. Let's send it to Kevin Burkhart. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.